Welcome to Today's Crunchy and Milk. If you have questions or comments, we have multiple ways we can be reached. Twitter is, of course, the best way for those who need instant gratification. And the show's Twitter feed is at SkimPod, S-K-I-M-P-O-D. Today's Crunchy. For the more patient amongst you, the email address for the show is podcast at stayscrunchyandmilk.com. Crunchy again being spelled with a K. Crunchy. Hey, feel free to give us a call at 216-264-6311. That's 216-264-6311. Today's Crunchy. And Milk. We're available by Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, anywhere. Fine podcasts are available. And of course, at the website, stayscrunchyandmilk.com. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share wherever possible, including on YouTube, where we can now be found at Stays, Stays Crunchy. Crunchy, and over on Twitch, where we're still Stays Crunchy in Milk. Our personal Twitters are Tatum216, Lunchbox2099, The Real ODP, and I'm your host, the Internet's Tayrail713. Stays Crunchy, 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 Stays Crunchy. Milk. Promise hair, Ron, I put my fist up after I get my dick sucked quick buck. Maybe a gold chain with that fucking flow that s- so belittles men. They tentatively tend to turn and go when I can finish stone cold. Holy fucking with these niggas, nigga. Listen, the description doesn't fit. If it's not a synonym of menace, then forget it. In turn, these critics and interns admitting the shit spit it. Just burn like six furnaces. Rid it of fix learning them digits and simultaneously Dispelling one trick pony myths, isn't he? One adolescent fucking six nigga energy and crawling down facts like a rich nigga centipede. Crack ceramic and slap a hand up his cash account. Stamping, shouting, thrashing these niggas done let the cracking out. Crack a lacking like snap crackle popping your ammo off. Hide your face and throw your flannels off. Sweatshirt, nigga. That's my man Earl Sweatshirt. That's from the, that's from the song Hive. Hello, <coughs> welcome to it. It stays crunchy and milk. It's episode 422, and we are the unprocessable entity. I'm joined by my best friends, too. But Tatum, the 216 is on Tatum 216. Yes, the 216 is on. Correct. <laughs> that was almost like a fucking tongue twister. Uh, I'm also joined by the homeboys you hear loud and clear. I'm a lunchbox 2099. I showed up. Um, I'm fighting through some. Michael Jordan like food poisoning, I think. You know, consider this my flu game. Oddly uh, uh, enough, might have, the culprit may have also been pizza. Oh yeah, I remember that. I mean, it came out after the fact, didn't it? And, and that, the that last dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, we got the home, yeah, uh, the real ODP game in the building. Hey, what's up? I might have bought blizzards today from somebody with a gun holster around their. Uh... Uh, uh, <laughs> not, oh, that's not called a holster, is it? The holster's the waist. The thing that goes around the arms is something else. Is it? Is it not a, just a holster? Arm, holster? arm holster? I guess, yeah, arm holster. Yeah, I always kind of like... Liked, uh... I guess they let you pack heat at Dairy Queen in Alabama. <laughs> <sighs> that state, wowzers. <laughs> Just, well, the heat, the heat's never been so cold. Get one of them soul. classically, one of them classically racist, homophobic, and just uh, like that, that's like one of the like one of the worst in the union states, right there. I'm glad you were like at the at the the scenic part of it. You know what I'm saying? You can be like, I can appreciate this part of it. <laughs> ah, but you know what? The Dairy Queen worker, black. <laughs> oh, Probably gotta have a gun just for their safety. In that state, <laughs> keep that thing on them. <laughs> like so at any had, moment now, clan members can show up at my Dairy Queen. I got to keep this thing on me, just so in he, case. He had a holster like the kind of detectives wear across their back, and or yeah, yeah, like he had two side pockets for ammo clips, and he had the gun on the other side. And I'm like, am I really seeing this? This guy's got packing heat while he's working at Dairy Queen. <laughs> that, but that Dairy Queen has a history of uh. I don't know, violence? <laughs> oh, my like, God. Maybe, um, maybe he's a, a detective and he's about to retire. And that's like, that. you know, he owns it. Him, him and his family own it. And that's his retirement plan. No. He was pretty young. <laughs> you got to really work on your yes back. and. You got to work on your yes and, gay. <laughs> 
gotta, you gotta keep the joke going, sir. Uh, <laughs> but you know what it is. We remote remote means uh, a couple news stories. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and a little bit of uh, just what's going on in our lives and some the assholes and video games. We get the fuck up out of here. That's how, I, that's how we get to down. Difficulties to a minimum. Oh, well, hey, let us, let, let us, let us be hopeful. So that, that, that's all we got right now. Um, first news story that I want to talk about, because I always, I, I always love getting uh, Box's take on matters like this. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver Antonio Brown suspended three games for COVID-19 violation. It's from the good people over at ESPN. <laughs> Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide out. Uh, Antonio Brown has been suspended three games for violating the NFL NFLPA COVID-19 protocols, the league announced Thursday. The league and players union found that Brown was among three players who misrepresented their vaccination status. A former personal chef of Brown said earlier this month that the wide receiver had obtained a faked COVID-19 vaccination card over the summer. Also suspended for three games were Buccaneers backup safety Mike Edwards and free agent wide out Frank, John Franklin III whom Tampa Bay had waived in August. All three pair players accepted their discipline and will not appeal, according to the NFL. Brown and Edwards' suspensions are without pay. Both will be eligible to return to the Buc- Buccaneers lineup for the team's December 26th game against the Carolina Panthers. The NFL and NFLPA negotiated the length of suspension ahead of Thursday's announcement, sources t- told ESPN's Dan Graziano. All three players are now vaccinated and admitted wrongdoing to the league in their investiga- investigative, investigative process. <laughs> a source told ESPN's Jer- Jeremy Fowler, the NFL, NFLPA jointly reinforced their commitment and further emphasized the importance of strict adherence to the protocols to protect the well-being of everyone associated with the NFL. The league and players union said in a statement, the league's investigation found that Brown brought a fake vaccination card with him to training camp. But shortly after, after after he arrived, someone told him he could he could it could get him in one could get him in trouble. He decided to make the decision to get vaccinated. Sources told Graziano, Brown's attorney Sean Burstyn Graziano. said in a statement said in a statement that Brown continues to support the vaccine for any person for whom it is appropriate. The NFL made its determination, and instead of going through the drawn out and distracting process of of challenging the outcome, Mr. Brown wrapped this up promptly. And he will be he will make the most of this time by treating his ankle injury, Burston said. Mr. Brown will be motivated, well rested, and in the best shape of his life when returning to work in week 16. Brown was not expected to play in the next two games because of an ankle and heel injury that has kept him out since week mm. seven. A source told ESPN's Adam Schefter on Wednesday. Che- Chef Chef Stephen Ruiz said earlier this month that Brown and had his girlfriend model Sydney Moreau reach out to him over the summer to obtain fake vaccination cards. After Ruiz was unable to acquire a fake vaccination card, he said that a few weeks later, the wideout showed him one of the ones he ones he had for himself and a robe that Brown said he had purchased. Ruiz told ESPN that Brown had obtained his fake vaccine card from a Buccaneers teammate. God damn, y'all really putting it out there. Ruiz declined to name the other player. Burson had denied that Brown obtained a vac- fake vaccine card. Why well, is on your part to do that? Brown said Wednesday when he was asked about vaccine card on the Richard Sherman podcast, that this, that's the sad part. The country say you're innocent until proven guilty, but you're guilty till you show innocence because anything someone says, everybody's already magnifying it. And if you come out and say anything, you just put yourself in a deeper hole because now it's like, I learned to realize criticism is answered with achievement. When people criticize you, there's no need to respond or worry. A day after Ruiz's initial allegation, Buccaneers coach Bruce Arians said the team did its due diligence in vetting players' vaccine cards, adding... I really don't think it's a story. There, uh, yeah, it's kind of. A story. There's a little more to the story, but I'm not gonna read the rest of it. I, I think I think you get guys got the gist. Well, the whole thing, I, from what I remember, when it first dropped, was that like the chef outed him because like he Antonio Brown owed him money or some shit. Ten sacks. Like, yeah, so he was trying to get back <laughs> at him by putting his dirt out there. Correct. And then it's like. Yeah, so then, like, there was all the, the, the denying and everything, you know, the what you assumed. But then when they, they suspended his ass yesterday, and then, like, it turns out the shit was kind of true. Isn't that shit a crime? Like, what weren't people getting arrested for, for like, having fake vaccination cards for, like, b- going to bars and shit earlier this year? Like, wasn't there a story of, about, I- like, like, a bunch of fake cards being seized in Cincinnati? 
Yeah, right. now that part, now that part, we did, we actually discussed that on the show. And yes, I think the manufacturer of the cards is where the crime is at. It's kind of like, you know, Johns and, 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 and uh, prostitutes is like, they will, uh, you know, <laughs> in some states, well, the prostitution part is cool. The John part is the illegal situation. Well, like, you know? aren't, like, these vaccination cards technically considered, like, legal documents? Hold on, tell, tell them all. So it's illegal to buy a pussy, but it's legal to sell it? Or vagina. So, so basically, uh, and I can't, I can't, I can't recall what state this, but this was, uh, or state or nation this was, but uh, yeah, it's, it's the Johns are the cr- the, cr- the the criminals, and that's in that uh, you know province or state wherever that was. Yes, that kind of that kind of that yeah. kinda sounds like uh, a car salesman. I'm so crazy, I'm giving these cars away. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll figure it out. Um, I, I was th- I was more thinking like. Hey, baby, you looking for a good time? I got some vaccine cards. We can get crazy together. <laughs> uh, of, 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 of course, you know what the internet is on, and you know what I'm kind of like, I can see your point, internet. It's rare that I'm just going to sign up with you, but... Uh, I saw that Aaron Rodgers was not vaccinated. And and went up there and told uh, an entire press conference, I am immune, immunized. And was not. And got fined basically two dollars of Aaron Rodgers money and that was it no suspension yeah. no nothing but he got COVID toe so, so you know karma get you <laughs> so I just I, I got I, I'm like I'm not I'm not trying to defend Aaron Rodgers in this in this case yeah. I thought like part of his thing was that it was a misunderstanding between him and the NFL no, if I, they, if I remember correctly, from everybody and every story that's come out about that shit, that motherfucker lied. Okay. The, I'm not, I'm not the, like the, I said, I'm not the, defending the, him. The, 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 the Packers, the Packers organization as a whole, knew it, so they lied too, and everybody was just like, "Yeah, he's immunized against probably chickenpox." Well, no, I Maybe. thought the whole thing was that it was supposedly some sort of like alternate treatment he was receiving or some shit. No, and that's, that's why the, he wanted to, he wanted to get an alternate treatment, and the NFL denied them that. Well, I thought, I mean, maybe maybe I miss saw the video, but I I swear the video was like one of the reporters asked him, "Are you vaccinated?" And he goes, "Yes, I'm immunized." Correct. That's a misunderstanding. That's a lie. Yes, <laughs> you have made an accurate statement and uh, an assessment of the situation, and so of course what, it just what, lo- it looks it looks shady. It just yeah, looks shady as fuck. I'm gonna admit, like after them suspending these three guys yesterday for, for the fake cards, like not suspending Aaron Rodgers at all looks real bad right now. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it, I can, I can understand uh, that. They they brought fake documentation. He just he just lied about it. Yeah, I see the difference there. But I mean, they all li- they all lied. They just yes, lied everybody lied. Everybody they lied. double and, lied. And in the case of the, in the case of Antonio Brown, the league has not said that he had a fake vaccine card. None of that has been is, is a part of this suspension. They simply said he violated violated protocol, and that is what they left it at. How was Aaron Rodgers? How was Aaron Rodgers not violating protocol? I want oh, yeah. I, I want them to tell me the difference to to security shit. The I, vaccine card shit. Yes, we know about it, but the league did not mention that in their suspension of this. They simply I said, the, "I thought the article you just read said that Brown had the fake ID card for training camp, but then he got vaxxed. That's in the story. Brown didn't say that. His lawyer didn't say that. The league didn't say that. That is simply what's being presented in this article. <laughs> I like how they go to the chef. From somebody. Okay. Somebody. <laughs> oh, you know, a chef. chef for fake docs. I know, I know it's because it's, he's Hispanic. I know it. <laughs> like, yeah, they, they I mean, fake ID, green cards all the time. Let's get, see if we can get a fake Oh, uh, no. Card. No, guy. Why would he go to that? Why would he go to the Hispanic guy? That's all I. I, w- I was just, I was just thinking maybe his boy had come through before with something else. No, yo, this is my guy who I go to for all my whatevers. Oh my goodness! I just want to know what other kind of dirt this chef knows. Like if he's out here snitching about vax cards, just wait until next week and be like, yeah, he nutted on that woman's back. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a situation t- that he would have to be there for. For ten thousand dollars. I guess well that, that ten thousand dollars that now you are never going to see. 
So now uh, you just snitch. He probably ain't gonna never see it, but he's probably he's probably paid at least that for for leaking that stuff. May have. Uh, but that, but then it's like, what celebrity now is gonna trust you to be around cooking their omelets when they know that like they can't do dirt around you because you're a snitch? Yeah, you, he bought a lot that, of bridges with that. What's that rapper? Is it Takashi six ninety seven thirty three? <laughs> what? Like, is he the the, the Takashi whatever of of, of chefs? He gonna be up there in trouble like he did it. <laughs> I saw it while I was making the prime rib. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the prime rib. I'm only about a smoker, right? And then I'm I'm, I'm here. <laughs> hey, why can't you just? I, I don't know. Now he's got. Yeah, like everyone's got to either like. He, either no one's gonna hire him, or everyone's gonna be like, I gotta behave around the chef. He'll, he'll snitch on me. The snitching oh, chef. Well, y- that yeah, this, a this show. I'm the snitching <laughs> chef. The Let snitch me tell you how chef. to make a great cake, and I'll tell you what this motherfucker did. Well, I I it's, it's, I, 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 I just I find it interesting. I find it interesting that uh, the same league that wouldn't suspend uh, you know, they 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 golden boy was just like I don't like this motherfucking Antonio Brown to begin with because they don't. And also, he's a criminal of sorts, right? Did he? Did, is, he is he a woman abuser? or Did he? Uh, what did he do? Oh, he did. Nah. He did a couple of things. Rapist. Ah, rapist. So there we go. Supposed, <laughs> supposed <laughs> rapist. And there's been some assault stuff, um, some property destruction. Um, yeah, you know, like he's had, he's had some things. There was also <laughs> that whole like. Uh, getting traded to the Raiders and then like causing a scene on Hard Knocks to get his ass thrown off the team, mm. so that he could go sign with the Patriots for like two weeks. That's when all the uh, like the he supposedly nutted on some woman's back stuff came out, and then the Patriots cut him, and then he was out of football for like the rest of the year. <clears throat> Sheesh. <laughs> That's the whole thing about this that I don't understand about Tom Brady. It's like this dude like got banned from the NFL for a year there's been this like court litigation about like his, this you know alleged sexual assault on this like per, this woman that he knew from college or whatever but then Tom Brady's just like I want to win bad enough to where I'll let this motherfucker live in my house with my wife and children like like almost like he trusts them implicitly or Tom Brady is willing to put his family in danger because he wants to win that badly like he's willing to risk Giselle catching one in the back, <laughs> so that he can get like that seventh Super Bowl ring. And it's like, bro, we all people who don't even like you finally have said, "Fine, you are indeed the greatest to ever have played this game." Cool, you ain't got to do no more, bro. Uh, did you see this uh, Grizzlies Oklahoma uh, the Thunder score? No. I'm gonna tell you the score. You tell me. I want to see your face when I tell you this score. Memphis Grizzlies, 152. Whoa. Oklahoma City Thunder, 79. What in the fuck? 73-point drubbing. That's shocking on a couple of fronts. Is that fronts. historic? One, that's, that's quite the gap. Two, who the fuck on Memphis is putting up 150 points? Like, their best player is out with a knee injury. I, I just, I can't even understand it. Let me get this box score right quick for you. I want to see who was uh, throwing up numbers like this. Uh, oh, yeah. Now see. that you mention it, it they, they posted it in our group chat a couple minutes ago. Uh, my buddy just said biggest margin in NBA history. Wow. Uh, Jay Jackson Jr., 27 points. D. Book, D. Brooks, 11 points. Uh, Adams, 9 points. T. Jones, 10 points. D Bain, 2 points. Off the bench, 11, 18, 6, 11, 17, 19, and 11. Everybody got in this motherfucking guy. Is everybody in double digits? No. One that, dude, no. Two two dudes not, three dudes not in double digits. That wasn't Uh-oh. even like an overtime score. That was like, No. They literally scored like, they averaged almost 40 points every quarter. Yeah, 31, 41, 41, 39. I'm sorry, this is just shocking to me and I happen to be on ESPN because I was reading that one story and I just saw, I actually saw uh. Draymond Green uh, tweeted out, 73 points, that's a fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
Sorry, that took that. Wow, it really pulled me out of my out of my understanding things. Of yeah, they were beating their ass so bad that most of the people on the team only played like fifteen minutes. They get like, some rest, baby. At, like literally, I'm looking at the minutes played, and like one dude played twenty eight minutes. A couple dudes played like around twenty, but then there's a lot of like fourteens and fifteens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most on the the most on the floor was somebody off the bench. Uh, who was this Conchart at twenty six minutes? Shooting guard John Conchar <laughs> of, of Purdue, where he played his college ball, played some ball. Ha! Purdue. That is a problem. That is a problem. Sorry. Well, sorry. Like I said, that was really, I was just snatched out of my damn space, man. That was wild for tonight. Uh, as we keep, keep, keep the story uh, train a rolling, this is uh, from a good people at CNN, Jennifer Korn. Where are all of the PlayStations? How gamers are handling the global shortage? Like many gamers in recent weeks, Nicole DeSantis 33 from outside Philadelphia combed through social media sites trying to find insider information on where to get a PlayStation 5 this holiday season. Stemming from the global chip shortage, video game consoles this year are particularly hard to come by. After successfully scoring a unit from Walmart.com, she's helped more than half a dozen local moms secure various video game consoles for their children. She also posts tips on popular Facebook groups such as PS5, Xbox Series X, Restock, which has 27,700 members on how to find them. You definitely need Intel to get a console, DeSantis told CNN Business. You can't just get it without. I'm going to argue with that, but we'll come around back around at that point. <laughs> More than a year after their initial launches, Sony's PS5 and Microsoft's high-end Xbox offering the Series X are difficult to find. The more recently launched Nintendo Switch OLED model, which launched in October 2021, is even harder to find on shelves and online. Restocks of the device sell out in minutes, and one incident in Harris County, Texas, even resulted in an armed robbery attempt when a 19-year-old man tried to sell his PS5 to a man he met online. Supply shortages and logistical issues have impacted many industries, including autos and consumer electronics, but the gaming industry has been hit notably hard as it competes with these other sectors for similar parts. The supply chain issues that plague other consumer items are more even are even more pronounced for gaming consoles for a few reasons, namely the chip shortage, logistics backups, and bots exploiting the supply and demand imbalance. Forcer, tech analyst Ala Al- Al- Valente told CNN Business. Late last year, Sony pulled back on its forecast to produce 16 million PS5 units between March and March 21st and March 2022, 21 and 22 adjusting the number to 15 million units. <coughs> Nintendo and Microsoft both warned customers early this month that console sales will be down stemming from the chip shortage. We will try our best to meet demand for all of our products de- de- depending on the current situation and any challenges related to shipping and supply chain management. A spokesperson for Nintendo told CNN Business, our goal is to manufacture enough systems to fulfill demand so that we can satisfy as many cus- consumers as possible. Similarly, a Microsoft spokesperson, spokesperson said Xbox Series X and S will continue to be restocked. <clears throat> We're working as fast as possible with our manufacturing and retail partners to expedite production and shipping to keep up with the unprecedented demand. They said, we recommend checking with local retailers for availability. But some shoppers like DeSantis are actively looking for workarounds. For example, Microsoft began offering in mid-November Xbox Series X bundles for select fans who receive links through their existing Xbox, account, Xbox accounts to purchase the package, which includes the console itself and a game. Sony has implemented a similar practice where it began emailing special invites to PS5 restocks based on previous interest in PlayStation activities, according to its website. Other retailers are offering special access to restock for shoppers who join their annual membership services. This includes Walmart Plus, which is $98 a year, Best Buy Total Tech, which is $200 a year, Costco, which is just, you know, just Costco membership, which is 60 bucks a year. And GameStop Power Up Rewards, which is $14.99 for a year. Power Up Pro, forgive me. The majority of Walmart Plus memberships are probably just people trying to get a PS5, and then they're going to cancel it after they obtain it, said DeSantis. Still, signing up for these services does guarantee someone will find a console. <clears throat> Barraquette T- Tesfay, 42 from Austin, Texas, is one gamer who can't locate a PS5 even after paying for subscription services. I join Walmart Plus, Amazon Prime, and GameStop's Pro membership so I can have an early chance of buying a system. And after a year, I still haven't gotten one, he told CNN Business. I have never in my life seen a console where one year after it came out, you just can't get, go into a store and pick it up. That means he was not around for the Wii. Trust me, I was. 
Uh, <laughs> Amir Asaf, 32, from Flushing, Michigan, runs three different social media pages to help gamers share tips on product availability. In addition to tweeting updates from his Twitter page, he manages a restock group on messaging app Discord and his PS5 restock updates and alerts group on Facebook with over 60,000 followers. A number of people started playing more video games during the pandemic and became interested in buying or upgrading their existing console, Asaf told CNN Business. We're effectively seeing a situation where there is an incredibly high demand coupled with a very low supply. The PS5 has been the worst one I've seen so far. He said scalper bots, which quickly buy the items to resell at a higher price, are also making it harder for average customers this year. I'm particularly excited when parents message me letting me know that my group was the reason they'll be able to gift a console to their child this holiday season, Asaf said. Analysts predict supply chain issues will impact the gaming industry well into 2022 and possibly into 2023. I also said he will continue to do his best to help connect consumers with coveted console. As of right now, my group will continue to run until shortages are no longer an issue, he said. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Had to wipe my spectacles off. I touched my eyeball. <laughs> um, I follow three things on Twitter. Wario64. IGN deals and uh, cheap ass gamer, which is I think I think that I can't remember what their what their game uh, their actual Twitter I think I think it's just game deals. I'm telling you right now, if you are a person out there that is trying successfully trying to get you one of these systems, you follow those three sites, you follow those three uh, 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 Twitter accounts, <coughs> turn on notifications for them, and don't even trip. They go they usually give you uh, as much heads up as you can get. And if you have, if you if you get that heads up and have done what you're supposed to do, which is be logged into the various stores that you need to be logged into to buy shit, so on and so on, this is a easily easily handled situation. It is it is there is some challenge to it. I'm not gonna lie to you, but it is relatively easy to 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 uh, jump in here nowadays and get this. I think people on Facebook are always behind people on Twitter by <laughs> a lot. So if your ass is over on Facebook, trust me, you probably are just finding out about shit. At least an hour later than, than what I know over here, so that's why I'm saying you got to be on Twitter and got to be on, down with these tw- Twitter bots. Me, um, me, and me and Dan have been tag teaming this shit, and I still haven't been able to get nothing. I did get a um. You got the OLED switch. Yeah, but that was like a fucking fluke. I was in Walmart, <laughs> and um. It was a Walmart I don't usually go into. Okay. And I walked past. It was one in the store just sitting yeah. there. Yeah. That's hot. That's the, I love that even more because that just means like, yeah, I went to the store and bought something. How the system's supposed to work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, like I've been tr- like, um, like what, what I've been up on all that stuff and like bots have ruined it pretty much because like, or we just live in a shitty area that doesn't uh that's not getting the stuff mm. because so, uh go on go on go on. like um i i i live near one two like five different targets yeah um uh, manor uh willoughby hills um mayfield um university heights I mean, okay, I guess four. None of them never have Xboxes. One time, I seen a dude walking out with an Xbox, and that was mm-hmm. only once. But like every time, like they're 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 they'll when the when the things come up, the the alerts, the areas never this area never has them. <clears throat> hmm. I'm kind of regretting not picking up those other two that I had gotten. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I managed to, to purchase three Xboxes, but I only ever got like one. I like the other two, like I kind of just let go. That one I would have had to driven to Kentucky for, and uh, yeah, but you know we would just bought some bourbon. But I mean, that's just, I mean I would have. That's always a fun road trip. Yeah. Well, the other one though, I would have only had to have driven over to the mall to pick it up from the Best Buy there, and I, I yeah. was just like, eh, you know. <laughs> I, in hindsight, yeah, I should have grabbed it, but whatever. Yeah, for sure. Um, y'all know the deal. Like I said, the, the my for the Xbox Series X, I went and stood in line old school at a at at, at a 
gang spot and and you know put my put my put my five on it. That was breezy. That was that, that just that one I just walked in and get. The OLED Switch, same difference. They, they when they announced that uh, pre sales are going on, I went to that sa- that exact same GameStop, and I, and I walked in store. He's like, "Oh, you're the first one to sign up for it." I'm like, "Oh, cool," because it just people just I, it, people weren't making sense of it yet. You know what I'm saying? Because they went on they, they went on pre order like July, and uh, just like I said, walk in, cop that, uh, you know, put my I put again, put my file down on it. Cool. The PlayStation Nine told y'all that story. That was a little more that was a little more active, a little more action oriented. But I, I worked that one out too. And then I've I've since got a second PlayStation. I got a PlayStation for, uh, for uh, a friend of ours, uh, and that one was just again cheap ass gamer popped up and said they go on on sale at this time. Get in get in the queue because PlayStation sells them directly, and you get in a queue and you just sit and wait and hope for the best. And I got one, and so I have I have uh, managed two PlayStations and an Xbox and an OLED Switch. I guess I've done it all. But I'm but also I'm that motherfucker who be on that F5 key, man. So I'll be I'll be on that shit on my computer, man. When it comes to like records and things like that. I'm always trying to get to them beforehand. I bought a weird ass collection of video game music the other day for no reason. I just saw it and I was like, that tape is gold. Like it looks shiny like a, the old school Zelda cartridge. And I was like, I'm going to buy this. Did not need to. Did, <laughs> but I did buy it. So so I just, I, I don't want you to be discouraged. It is a challenge. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's not a challenge. But if you just old school it and, uh, and, 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 I'm telling you right now, if anything says it's going on sale at X time, be on that site three minutes before then and just start hitting F5. F5, 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 F5 until it goes on sale and then immediately put it in your cart and try to check out and just go. And uh, I, I've had better success on my phone uh, through Apple Pay. And that is exactly, that's exactly how I got my, play, my the PlayStation that's sitting over here next to my TV right now is I was I got on my phone, would not take my credit card. And I was just like freaking out. So I was like, fine, Apple Pay that bitch. And and it worked like a champ. It just because it just goes right through. So, uh, those are just some recommendations that your boys gonna make for you. And I, like I said, I own these cost all these all these consoles currently and so forth. So, I which one I'm trying to which one are you still trying to get? Aunt? You said um, the Xbox. Well, or yeah, the PlayStation. Uh, I mean, at this point, it really doesn't matter <laughs> whatever I can get. But, um, it I keep on flip flopping in my head. One, I was like, I I haven't had an Xbox. And what, like three or four uh, generations? Maybe I should get an Xbox. Okay. But seeing the stuff that's coming down the um, the pipelines, maybe I should probably um, get a, um, a a PS5. But I don't know. Whatever one I can get my hand on. Right on. <laughs> well, we will certainly uh, address that. We will get that thing care of because that's what that's what we do. This is one of those stories that um, I don't know what to fucking do with no more, man. Every time I see shit like this, I'm like, really? Okay. Uh, again, this is from CNN. This is uh, Camera Hassan Michelle w- and Michelle Watson. Christian Television Network founder and preacher Marcus Lamb, who discouraged vaccination, dies after being hospitalized for COVID-19. Prominent Christian televangelist and anti-vaccine advocate Marcus Lamb died after being hospitalized with COVID-19, his family announced Tuesday. Lamb founded Christian Television Network Daystar Television Network in 1997. His wife, Joni Lamb, announced the televangelist's death on Daystar's program Stream to Facebook Tuesday. She said her husband had diabetes but was healthy and was hospitalized after being diagnosed with COVID-19. He never talked about that, but he had diabetes, but he kept it in check. He was very healthy. He ate healthy. He kept his weight down, and he always kept his sugar at a good level. But with, but, but with trying to treat COVID and the pneumonia, the different protocols that are used, including many of the protocols we talked about here on Daystar. I don't know what those protocols are. They don't mention. And, and we use those and I use them and breeze through COVID. It caused so his blood sugar. Yeah, it caused his blood sugar to spike and just a and, and just a decrease in his oxygen. And that's when he went to, why he went to the hospital so he could have oxygen, Joni Lamb said. He 100 percent believed in everything that we talked about here on Daystar. And helping so many people around the world with early protocol treatments for COVID, we still stand by that, obviously. Joni Lamb said her husband's heart just gave out. Marcus Lamb often spoke out against COVID-19 vaccines on the show. In an episode earlier this year featuring anti-vaccine activist Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Dell Bigtree, Lamb said the COVID-19 vaccine was not really a vaccine, but an experimental shot that was dangerous. Marcus Lamb alleged that people were dying 
or having neurological disorders from the vaccine. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective and that any adverse events after vaccination are rare but may occur. People who are not vaccinated against COVID-19 are 11 times more likely to die of the disease and 10 times more likely to be hospitalized with the disease, according to a study published by the CDC. Marcus Lamb's son, Jonathan Lamb, described his father's COVID-19 di diagnosis as a spiritual attack from the enemy. Mm. Who's the enemy? As he, as he hosted the show on November 23rd, there's no doubt in my mind that this is a spiritual attack from the enemy. As much as my parents have gone through on here to kind of inform everyone and everything going on in the pandemic and some of the ways to treat COVID, there's no doubt that the enemy is not happy about that. And he's doing everything he can to take down my dad, Jonathan Lamb said. Joni Lamb described the illness as riding a roller coaster on the same episode. She, she asked people in November to pray specifically for Lamb's lungs to clear the COVID pneumonia and pray for his oxygen levels to continue to be strong and to go up and up, go up and so that we can wean him off the oxygen and bring him home. A statement from Daystar Television Network said in part, the family asked that this time their privacy be respected as they grieve this difficult loss and they wish to express their deep love and gratitude for all those who prayed during Marcus's health battle. Continue to lift them up in prayer in the days ahead. Well, the the first prayer set of prayers. Why do they want more praying? <laughs> I just I don't understand how you gonna tell me, okay, you got COVID and you did okay, but he had COVID and a comorbidity and died. Well, bro, that that I'm not saying that I guess pushes the vaccine that, that you should be taking the vaccine, but it should tell you like maybe the shit you talking about works don't work. Possibly. Just, I don't know. It's making me, it makes me a little bit, it drives me a little bit bonkers. Uh, last story. I, I kind of oh, go on, like, go on, go on, go on, go on, man. I mean, we've been going through this for, shit, coming up in a little bit, almost two three years. years. Well, two, but whatever, I'm with you. And, like, I don't know, P.F., I mean, I know somebody who just recently... Like got diagnosed with with COVID and um, and pneumonia and is a diabetic. So it's like, I mean, almost it's almost the weak of the strong. I mean, it's the it's survival of the fittest right now. It's like if that's not something you believe in, I'm I'm not interested in like really having the conversation anymore. It's like. This is the this is the path you're choosing now. Yeah, and I, and I, and I guess I, I guess we just got exactly. I can't be I can't be so overly sensitive to the fact that these people are just being are just knuckleheads. And I'm like, I, I you I guess if you want to uh, tempt tempt fate and see if you can make it through COVID or not. I mean, I guess Come mathematically on. speaking, some people do. You know, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, yeah. I I guess. People are just like, come on, Cole, you raggedy bitch. I got your number. <laughs> <laughs> Last story. You know, we got to keep it Ohio bound. Uh, this one. This one's a uh, this one's interesting. Also, I found this woman very attractive. I'll put this uh, story link in the uh, in the uh, in the chat. Y'all can tell me y'all opinion on uh, this woman's attractiveness. Yes, that seems uh, messy, but I'm just saying. Hey, sin. Cleveland woman admits to running a large-scale ring that funneled, funneled cocaine from California to Northeast Ohio. It's from the good people of uh, Cleveland.com. Uh, is, is that Rachel? <laughs> John Caniglia is the author of this piece. Cleveland, Ohio, a Cleveland woman who admitted to leading a large-scale drug ring that poured nearly 450 pounds of cocaine into Northeast Ohio from California. Kalila Crumpler, Crumpler 46, pled, pleaded Black guilty to... Crack to conspiracy charges Tuesday before <laughs> U.S. District Judge Sarah Le Leoy. Crumpler faces a minimum of 10 years in prison to a maximum of life behind bars when Leo sen Leoy sentences her April 8th? God damn, you can just really just do that. Okay. For years, Crumpler used drivers to haul the drugs uh, to haul the uh, drugs and hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash between Cleveland and Ontario, California, which is located just east of L.A. 
according to a plea agreement in the case. The drivers hid the cocaine in a case in a cash in, and cash in suitcases and heavy duty Pelican cases and stored them in secret compartments to elude law enforcement. The plea agreement said. Once the drugs came to Cleveland, Crumpler relied on Christopher Fitzgerald, a courier driver, to distribute them a record show. Uh, man, why are these fucking people <laughs> like these names and all these articles, man? Like people really out here snitching, snitching. Uh, Crumpler and oh, of uh, Christopher Fitzgerald, courier driver, distributing the show. Leoy sentenced Fitzgerald in 2017 to 188 months in prison for using his job. To peddle cocaine across the country. So he already inside. Crumpler said and Fitzgerald used an apartment in Beechwood to stash drug proceeds, money counters, and other supplies for the ring. Prosecutor said Crumpler funneled profits from the drug enterprise into phony companies. She used her family and friends as owners of these businesses, according to court records. She was arrested in 2019 following an investigation that began years earlier. She caught the attention of law enforcement after a traffic stop in Twinsburg in 2010. Officers realized that she had an outstanding warrant in Maple Heights. They found she had $677,600 in her vehicle. Mm. She testified that the money was given to her by her boy, by a boyfriend, according to the plea agreement. Federal prosecutors later seized the cash as they said it stemmed from drug sales. The cl- they claimed that some of the money had been wrapped in dryer sheets, a move to mask the scent of drugs or cash involved in illicit transactions. They literally laundering money. That's, that's hilarious to me. They put them dryer seats on it. In December 2017, Crumpler gave a, a suspected supplier 680k for nearly 60 pounds of cocaine. Coke costs a lot. Wow, that is that is an impressive amount of money being changed. The plea agreement said authorities said she used an apartment near LA to prepare and package the shipments to Cleveland. To avoid detection, she poured hundreds of thousands of dollars into dr- of, in drug proceeds into shell companies, according to the plea agreement. Hmm. Prosecutor said that she and Fitzgerald formed H2O Ultra Lounge in Maple Heights with the profits. It closed October 2016 after a fatal shooter, fatal shooting and frequent calls to police. She also formed Trillionaire Tykes, an attempt at an upscale clothing line for children, and two Saucy Productions, an apparent recording <laughs> studio record show. Both were set up in California. Prosecutors are seeking to seize diamond-studded earrings, several high-end bracelets, Framed jerseys of O.J. Simpson and Magic Johnson, boxing gloves autographed by Muhammad Ali, and $25,369 in cash. They claim the items were obtained through drug sales. Ohio! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, it seems like everything uh, seems to to always come through here some, some way. Somehow, we are some the heart we, of it all. <laughs> we keep coming up with funky ass shit like every single day. Every single day. Man, I was just I saw that and I was like, well, yeah, that's 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 definitely on the show. And it, it she's amazing looking for a 46-year-old woman. I I I said I found her very, very, very fetching. <laughs> and, but but clearly, um, you know, doing that much coke can pickle you and make you look good forever. <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, pickled coke heads. Ah, but anyway, that 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 is the the tale of the tape, man. You know, what I'm saying we done with the news, so we just ride on over to my man Ant and uh, Ant Man. Uh, what's been going on with you, bruv? Nothing, nothing really. Um, been working. You know, decorating for Christmas and stuff like that. Gonna do that this weekend. Um, that's really about it. Yelling at my kids. That don't make okay. me feel good, but you know, sometimes it gotta get done. I mean, it it, it, it is what we do uh, sometimes. I, I funny enough on the uh, on the the latest uh, Cadillac on Mars, another podcast your boy is on. We just discussed uh, the on on the what up with that segment. We discussed. Uh, What's going on with parents letting their kids just be wilding? And you are not letting your kids be wilding. You you are doing what you have to do to keep your your kids from wilding. And they made a point to say on that show, two of the people on that show was like, Anthony making us all look bad. He's, he being such a, guy, a good dad. Look at all these pictures on his Instagram with him taking care of his children. So oh. <laughs> you, 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 were, you had a very, a, 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 part, a good portion of the, of the program. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> 
it's funny, like, I thought about it today, like, how I haven't been taking pictures on Instagram, because, like, um, first, you know, it's getting a little colder, and yeah. my, my oldest son is like, um, you my, okay, first, my youngest son, only my youngest son catches the bus. Okay. Um, he loves catching the bus. Uh, it's just something about it that he digs. Uh, when my young, my oldest son was in kindergarten, he got on the bus exactly once. He had a freak out. He was like, he said, fuck that. I do not want to catch the bus. So for um, a whole year, he made me late for work every single day because I had to take <laughs> him to work, take him to school. Um, but now I was like, uh, you know, it's getting colder outside. Um, and my, he gets cold quick and he don't want to be standing outside taking no pictures or, you know, uh, taking videos. And like, I guess, um, the secret to most of those pictures, um, like you have to look closely every, almost every one of those pictures, their feet aren't on the ground. And they, they, they are, they are in the air yeah. leaping and they like, Oh hell yeah. I'm down with the jump dad. <laughs> so that that we always have fun with that, but like um, I don't know, I don't really. I mean, I'm not trying to bring down the podcast, but I don't know if I'm going to have a long life. Um, I'm a black man. I live in America, and I kind of feel like, you know, I try to make memories while I can while I'm here. Um, like, um, I don't know. I don't I consider it like spoiling my kids or anything like that. I just consider it like, um, man, it's it's nice to to be able to do nice things for people you love. Yeah, factual, man. I, I, we just because we don't know how long we got, so we might as well just go ahead and do what we gonna do. Do it now. Yeah. Just, I, I feel like that is a, that is definitely a lesson this pandemic has taught me. It's like, bro, just just go up. You know what I'm saying? Go go, go do, what, do what you got go do what you got to do and do how you gonna do it. Well, I mean, which is why which is why Gabe is on the road in the RV right now because it's like a lot of this shit has been like, let's do it because <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, I might not be where I am yeah. if it wasn't for the pandemic. Yeah, I was pretty jealous when I heard you had Zaxby's. Man, I was like, damn, I want some Zaxby's. <laughs> so, like, uh, have you um, had you been to Zaxby's before you uh, you went on your trip? Uh, went to it in South Carolina some okay. years ago. I didn't remember it, but uh, I tried it again. I like, yeah, like um, I know. I remember liking <laughs> it uh, back in South Carolina. Yeah, I, I I'm looking forward to. I want to try it. Like um, you know, I don't know if we spoke about this before in the podcast, but oh, I, I haven't had it before. Well, I think only T had some before. Me. Yeah, T and I had a box in oh, uh, yeah. Tennessee last year. Yep, it was Man. all right. I enjoyed it, and the, and the lady was super sweet to us in the window, so <laughs> that's what I remember mostly, like, the sirs and yes, and I'm like... Oh, that's the thing you. about Southern hospitality, southern man, hospitality. like, it, it, they all seem super nice, but then it's like, which one of y'all got, like, the fucking pitchforks and shit in the closet, <laughs> you know? I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> I'm trying to find what is the nearest Zaxby's to us, I just want to know. I always look like whenever I see a too. restaurant, I always look up like what's the closest one to me. I, I, I just like like trying shit when I'm in that area. Like when T and I were there, I'd heard of this like Southern White Castle place called Crystals, yeah. and uh, when we saw it, I'm like, well, I got to try because I've seen about, I've seen this on YouTube. I don't recommend it, but I had to know for <laughs> myself, you know. Yeah, I mean, it would, and I. Oh. Yeah, oh, okay. I always recommend so try it twice too. because like it could it could be a bad day or just not not the greatest area. I mean, it was burger sliders. Like, how good could it really be? But <laughs> I don't know. Some like um, every time I think of like White Castle, I keep on thinking like, man, if I see a White Castle, White Castle, this might be the day I start eating beef again. <laughs> I used to love White Castles. I know half of the. Half of the memory is like my grandmother used to take me when I was little, but I remember that taste and that taste is pretty good. It's that onions, baby. They they, they they be doing it. 
I yeah. White Castle. Um, I, I made some, um, yeah. I guess, White Castle um, s- s- style uh, turkey burgers um, a little while ago. It was like a few months ago. They were all right. You put holes yeah, in Yeah, what I did was, um, I guess, we can cue the music for Anthony's cooking hour. So... <laughs> I took a zi- uh, so I took like a um, I guess like a, a pound of uh, ground turkey. I put it in a Ziploc bag, and then I flattened it out with a rolling pin, and then like um, inside of the um, like the Ziploc bag, then I put the um, I sectioned it out into how many pa- um, how many uh, buns I had, which is what what a um, like a dozen or something like that. So. No, that is not what I did. I'm totally lying to y'all. I took dun, two dun, pieces. Dun. <laughs> <laughs> I did it with wax paper because my bag wasn't big enough and I had to start over. So I did. I put the wax paper down, rolled it out, um, put the buns like directly on top of the um, like the the wax paper. This sounds Sectioned like it. those like food TikToks I be seeing. Man, we can start TikToking. Um, so then I, uh, you know, sectioned it off, like the 12 buns, and then I, you know, put all the little holes in them. Then I put it in the freezer, got the onions ready, and then put them on top of the onions and and, um, and ate them. It was pretty good. Yeah, like, part of your process sounds like those TikTok videos where, like, they'll put, like, the, the mini buns in, like, the bottom of the pan. Then they'll put, like, the chicken and the marinara and the cheese and shit on top of it. Then they'll put the top buns down and then cut it with, like, garlic butter and throw it in the oven. So then, like, when it comes out, it's, like, pull apart, like, mini chicken sliders with, like, Parmesan and shit like that. Yeah, very, very, very similar. Uh, Zaxby's, there's there's a Zaxby's in Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh. We and we go drive, other. and we driving through there? Just, just point no. out to you that that is... No? <laughs> well, no, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying no, like, I'm not allowing it, like, no, like, Indy's like two hours south, south. of where we're gonna be. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to, uh, do something, um, on our road trip that's coming up, um... That's food wise. We gotta eat at least once, right? I gotta have a cake shake. You know the rules. I'm trying to see if I see another Zaxby's in our in the, in the general Chicago land area, and it's just I just don't. So the nearest Man. Zaxby's to us is the one in Indianapolis. I do want to try Zaxby's, but Bojangles is is much higher on my list, and that's it even before. Be. I mean, <laughs> I'm not like it. I I I know um, you know. After that, that video was posted, but still, I still want Bojangles. I'm sorry. Oh no, no, I've had Bojangles and just dislike it. I didn't know there was a video to be uh, discussed. Well, video, yeah. What, what happened? Yeah, what video are you talking about? The one that uh, um, that that dude from Cleveland put out the like the top uh, five uh, oh, or ten oh. uh, best chicken spots. Yeah, the, we uh, I had Bojangles when we went to Washington D.C. I but did, just, y'all, did, so did y'all have it at I the just, train station or the actual place? Yeah, train station. Train station. So it's like, I'm going to be honest, I don't fucking remember eating it. I know I ate it because it's one of my first Instagram pictures of the cup, but I don't remember any of the food. I literally don't even remember how it tastes. I mean, I understand that, and um, I'm going to let y'all finish, but... <laughs> um, no, I'm saying I would try it again. Oh. I don't well, have, t- like, an opinion because I don't remember what I ate. Well, we we gotta we gotta get some Bojangles one of these days. Like, if if we wanted to know my opinion, we probably have to go pull up like episode three of the podcast or something like that. Because <laughs> I don't fucking remember. Yeah, like I I, I like and I want to try like Poco Loco. It's a couple different places I want to try. I did see that when I was down in Florida, but we didn't stop. I do want to try Del Taco. I had Del Taco. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I like Del Taco. They, they, and Del they Taco. they have ground they have ground turkey there. Oh, so Del Taco's got a pretty like expansive people. They've got a pretty expansive menu. Yes, they do. I used to have pictures on my phone of their menu. The Del Taco menu is hitting like that for you? I no, it driving. was it was it was in my phone because um, my partner was in the car <laughs> and I was inside. 
And like I didn't want to be talking on the phone like they got this, they got this, they got this. Okay. You just shot him the, the thing. I uh I remember driving past Del Taco in Cali, but I don't know if we stopped by Del Taco. I feel like we did not. But hey. I've been to the one in Vegas a couple times. Hmm. Yeah, like um I think um I mean, of course, I'll I'll have to talk it over, but um, I, if I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Vegas this year for my birthday. Oh shit! Oh, fancy! I don't know if it's fancy, man. You live in an RV? How you gonna say something fancy? You you been you been globe trying to eat Zaxby's? <laughs> <laughs> Living in an RV, I don't know how to call it fancy. When I have to I drain mean, out my own uh my own uh shit. And dump it I mean, into a, a tank. That's the penalty of leadership. That's not um, a bad thing. Like you, you, you live in a um, like you're living in a, 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 a luxurious RV. You're eating Zaxby's. You're going uh, grocery shopping a couple times a week. You're living a good life right now. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I'm enjoying it. I gotta I still have to go to the Piggly Wiggly. Man, <laughs> I, I remember they man. had um, they had these um, these brand of sugar cookies. Well, to be to be precise, they were lemon sugar cookies, mm. and them shits were so good. And my grandpa had bought some, and I ate the whole box, and he got pissed off at me and put me in a camel clutch. <laughs> Called you a jabroni. Uh, this is way before the rock. This is like like 1992. No, the Iron Sheik calls people jabroni. Oh Welcome well, well he I I didn't know that. that. A terrible impression. I'm sorry. And then uh, on top of that, uh, we were a WCW family, so um, <laughs> fuck the Iron Sheik. Fuck you, fuck you, Hulk Hogan, you jabroni. So once again, me 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 breaking in with live events happening right now. Uh, the the versus Triple Six Mafia Three Six versus Bone is happening right now. Yes, I I, 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 I started to mention that. And apparently, uh, busy just. Uh, Tried to attack somebody in the three six body, and then they immediately cut the feet. <laughs> oh wow! Because apparently Bone is losing hard. Because of course the Cleveland team be losing hard on nas- on a national stage, wouldn't we? <laughs> well, now that they score, how, I, I haven't watched the verses. So how does it work? You you get scored? It's, a, is, it's is just there, like a, a battle. Declared? No. Uh, it's it's like like base, basically, basically it's the court of public opinion that would decide who wins and what not and so forth. But I mean. Look, when was the last time Bone was popular? He's, he's, he's 99, Eternal. It's Crossroads Remix. Not even Crossroads First Original. Month. First of the month. For the love of money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it like I I wanted to mention it because like my favorite Bone song isn't a, uh, isn't even hey. even popular. Mine is um it's an everyday thing from the uh, show song. When you let your nuts hang, I'm gonna be Jesus. yo. That's a dope ass song. <laughs> if they and, really wanted to pull off the dub, what they needed to do was drop Mariah Carey in there so they could do that breakdown remix. That's what my man Choppy said. He said if, if he said if they bring up Mariah Carey, they win. But that's the only yeah. way they can go up against Triple Six this way. Triple Six has been making hits, hits since like yeah, the I mean, mid two thousands. They won yeah. an Oscar. I love yes. Bone, but they haven't had a hit since like what, like ninety seven. Thank you. Uh-oh. It just no, it, no. I, I well, that one song was uh, I tried so hard, but that you was up in the two thousands. Yeah, that was like two thousand eight. <laughs> you got me there. I, like, I, I, I I admit I'm wrong on that one. And yeah, uh, but that was mostly because of the Akon hook. Akon yeah. um is is like can't seem to get away from misery. <laughs> I yeah. tried try so, so hard. hard. Yeah, that, uh, that was um. Always that was be a victim of these streets. So, um, yeah, I I I know I'm, I sound sacrilegious as a, a a Cleveland guy who's not a huge fan of Bone, but my, like I said, my favorite Bone <laughs> song isn't popular. So they, they, I didn't we'll think they were that. gonna win. They seem to have gotten it back together. Oh, okay. The feed, the feed well, is going again. They seem to be clear. I'll kill you. You get on your side like, of stage. You get on your side of stage. Most of like, like weren't like some members of Bone just off in jail while like Three Six Mafia had their own reality show. I don't know, but Three Six is, is clearly like hype right now and doing the damn thing. So it's but, just like, I mean, 
I don't know. I kind of feel like like Three Six Mafia is 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 legendary. It's not like Bone isn't. Oh no! Hold on. And big booty bitches. <laughs> I mean, we just we just have look. They got Crossroads. They got they got first of the month. But it's like, and they got thuggish ruggish. We got. I was saying, if you we all we're not about rap. We are, but we are about those thugs. Tell, like, uh, what also makes a good group is the offshoots <laughs> of that group. Yes, it ain't, it ain't so, many bone offshoots, but you got you got Project Pat, Project Pat, Pat, Pat the <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well, like fuck what um, one one dude was with uh, what was it uh, the the, the riding dirty song he featured on that shit like what like fifteen years ago. Oh yeah, so yeah, Ch- Ch- oh, millionaire or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Crazy Bone was on uh yes um yeah. but 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 still like I always forget my bone flavors. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like busy, wish, crazy, flesh. But, uh, flesh yeah. is uh is 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 uh what's called his brother. So yeah, I <laughs> like him when I see him at the Kinda mall, shot. but but still, it's like hey. Oh, it's a couple. It's a couple Mo Thug songs I fuck with too. But it's like you ain't bringing out Ken Ken Dog. So. <laughs> Man, I, so, I had that. I had that both thugs album. We all did. Yeah, <laughs> that 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 thug, to me as a Christmas because gift. Thug Devotion is a hitter. Yeah. But I then you gotta go get my you know Keisha. My grandmother, rest in peace, bought me that Mo Thugs album at the Kmart over by Aurora Aurora Road, like right out Northfield area. Yeah, the one that used yeah. to be over there by the Old Country Buffet. <laughs> It's not Keisha. It's, it's Tasha. It was Tasha. <laughs> Tasha. So you, so you gotta go get. You gotta get Motha. You gotta get T- uh, Tasha. You gotta get uh, Too True. Man, Kim, you remember, Ken Dog. You remember buying CDs when they came with like that white the plastic security? The long sleeve. The, the, yeah, the so long you box. Go to the register and get them to pop it out of there. Yes. Yes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Classic Taz, man. Y'all ain't ready for that cheerings. Y'all don't remember that, but I, actually, as my my child pointed out to me the other day, this is a show mostly for dads, and I'm like, you ain't lying. <laughs> oh yeah, but this like, show? We're, not, we're not the mouth of a gener of a, a younger generation. Like, it is what it is, you know. I I uh, again, I was on. We we had a guest on Cadillac on Mars uh, December episode, uh, uh, Mike Fowler, and he was talking about the episode, the Gabe's going away episode, and how much it touched him. As, as, a, as, a, as a person and as a, as, as a father and a friend, and I was like, "All right, I fuck with that. Thank you for t- thank you for saying that about about what we do here." So, y'all really need to go look out, check out the latest episode of Cadillac on Mars, because of course it's it's a good episode. But it's the last one of the year, and so forth and so on. So, plus I'm on that shit. Come on, bro. <laughs> and the song it's available on Stitcher. There you go. It's everywhere. What is Bone doing? Okay, let's check in right quick. <laughs> Days of Our Lives. Nice. I like that song. These are the days of our lives. But see, that's, no a, that's no, not... No one... That's a soundtrack that's not song. How, that is not how you win a versus. Now, first yeah. of all, what, what I love about the versus is, is it's it's a battle. You don't play fucking songs that's going to make you weepy and shit like that yeah. right there. Like, you got to keep the crowd hype. It's, it's a battle, and it's kind of like... Well, you play a, they play a song, you play a better song. They play a song, you play, you, they're not, uh, they're, they can't be ass and titties. I don't know what song they can play that would be ass and titties. It's Talk hard. to bullshit. Tell you, man, you would have brought up. <laughs> Talk I don't think to that would bullshit. Oh, bro, I'm telling hey, you. If, if they did this versus battle yesterday, they could have <laughs> had first of the month as like their trump card. Oh my yeah. God! The fact they waited but, a day is bullshit. <laughs> but that's but that's what they. It's almost a, a hour. You can't just play that. Like that's playing like a big Joker right when you start playing. You can't. They can't no, do but that. That that, that could have been their lead off. Like what, what were we thinking? Like Crossroads has got to be the finale. No, yeah. it's either it's either first of the month or for the love of money. I say you. I mean, you just start that shit with thuggish ruggish. We're not against rap. We're not against rappers. But we are against those thugs. You just come in with the hit, the, the one that brought you to the safe to begin with. 
That's what you start with, I'm saying. And then maybe Crossroads. But you gotta, like, you gotta end with that motherfucker. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, yeah, the easy verse? Hell yeah, just bring yeah. a little easy, little easy rap still, right? But, like, yet again, like, then you hear cracker, cracker, niggas' jaws, breaking, breaking the law. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, I don't think... No, bro, uh, Project Pat is a motherfucking monster, so you can... I mean, I, yeah. I, I, my man Juicy J, too, so I, you're right, bro. I can't call dig it. Dig that. I'm out here trying to break a hole. Dig <laughs> I don't... I don't... I just don't feel... I, I don't know. I just don't feel like... I kind of feel like uh, Three Six Mafia should have went against, like, Outkast. Just some South Park versus South shit? Yeah, true indeed. Or Rony run DMC. I don't know. dropped a lot more albums than I realized. I thought they were kind of like on hiatus, just doing like touring and shit these last few years. But nah, man, they've been dropping albums that no one's heard. They're, they're, they, like they said, they try so hard, man. But like, so like, if I go through their, their discography on Spotify, their first album, Creeping on, oh, come on up. I'll Come Up. Yeah. 94. East 99, uh, 1995. Uh, the Art of War, 97, which I had that album, too. I think yeah, the I probably, double album. Yeah, I think my grandma bought me that the same day she got me that Mo Thugs album. Nice. <clears throat> then uh, Bone Thugs in Harmony. Well, BTNH Resurrection in 2000. I think that went around the time some of them started, started to go to jail. I don't think, I think only, only, one 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 of, bad, only one who went to jail was Flesh. And he wasn't really in Bone. He was a, he is a brother. He is a brother of Bone, but he is not. He was, he was never actually officially in the group, and uh, had his own deal with Def Jam. Okay, but yeah, uh, he did time. He had guns hidden in a baby crib. Shit. Hmm. So then, two thousand. They also had the Collection Volume Two, two thousand two Thug World Order. Um, God, that sounds awful. Yeah, <laughs> two two thousand six Thug Stories. 2007. How many, how, many, how many of these are titled with thug in the in the in the headline there? I like that. Uh, there's a couple more coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 2007 was Strength and Loyalty, which I think was the album with tried. So, yeah, that's the one with I tried on it. Uh, 2007 also had T H U G S. Uh, 2009 Uni5 the prequel. Mm. Then 2010, they dropped Uni 5, The World's Enemy. Um, Best of Bone Brothers, also 2010. 2011, still creeping on uh, Come Up. Mm. <laughs> still? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two th- also 2011, <laughs> Everyday Thugs. Still in 2011, Four Smokers Only. Mm. Uh, 2013, oh, yeah, Mo Thug Records present Bone something. Thugs and Harmony Live. Uh, 2015, still creeping on a come up and Bone Brothers 2 Deluxe Edition. Twenty, still in 2015, nothing but the hits. Mm. 2015 looks like they released still creeping on a come up again. To also in 2015, Thug Brothers. 2017, Thug Brothers 2. <laughs> a new also uh, in 2017, new, new waves. Still in 2017, Thug Brothers 3. 2018, The Lost Files. Mm. And then in 2019, Bone for Life. I knew of three of those albums in total. Sorry, four. <laughs> four. And I just went through a lot. And I'm from Cleveland. <laughs> right. uh, every, everybody and their mom is in this right. chat. Spice Thank Adams. Uh, uh, Snoop Dogg. The Memphis Grizzlies talking shit about the Cavs. It's everybody is in this damn versus. This shit is heartbreaking, man. Like K- Killer can, Mike is in here. I can take like our sports teams like getting ridiculed and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I'm used to it. <laughs> but like, we had a niche group <laughs> that everybody seemed to have some kind of love for. But like, but they they can't go against Three Six Mafia. They have, they have, a, they have. It would appear they have escorted Busy away, who was the fighter in this situation, and he is not back on the stage. So it's just a uh, wish flesh. Uh, he's, got a, he's got ejected from the verses. Yeah, wish flesh crazy and uh, uh, lazy. So <laughs> he's gonna get a game. He's gonna get a versus expen- suspension. So what? It, what account do you watch it on? 
You just go on Instagram. If you go on Instagram and go to versus versus TV V E R Z U Z T V, it's just okay. it's just it's just their live. Okay. And I, I I don't have it turned up. I'm just keep glancing down at the screen. Yeah, yeah. Here. I'm looking at it. it looks like uh, Three Six Mafia is up right now. Yeah. Also, yeah, they got fucking against the boo. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about against the boo. She, the, like, she got songs with Run the Jewels. Several at this point, a couple of songs. So it's like they, she can just come out and do RTJ songs. Did they turn the comments off? Because I don't see any. No, it's just it's it's scrolling. I'm getting hearts, but I'm not getting any comments. My shit's blank. No, mm. well, the last comment I got was from uh, was an at, at Carrie Hilson. Might as well be, oh. but you're right. It does not seem to be rolling anymore. Uh, so. I just okay, it just popped up. Yeah. Yeah. The the one again Another, those dip dipset versus uh the locks. Yes. Was was game changing. Like the world talked about that shit the next day. It was so insane how how like cuz everybody would have thought dipset would have got him. They just they did it. But then the, the 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 locks did what they supposed to do. They went to the gym. They got in shape. They was practicing. <laughs> they they did rehearsals. They even said as much. They said we we did rehearsals. We got together. And when it was all said and done, they went in there and, and blew them out like the Grizz on Oklahoma City tonight, man. It was it was a thing. <laughs> but see, that's the thing, though. I, like, so it was the locks versus Dipset. Only if there's only really two good rappers in Dipset. Like all the locks can rap. And one of the the locks has a Michael Jordan on their team. <laughs> like Cameron is good, but he's like a Jerry Stackhouse, if anything. He's not like he he played for a couple teams. He was real good on some couple teams, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to check. Trying to say this <laughs> yeah, like man, Jada Kiss is still a monster. Yes, yeah. Uh, it was it it, it it was like I said. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got Capo. You got you know what I'm saying. Jim Jones, Jim Jones is nice. I'm saying I, resp- I, I, I put some respect on my man Jim Jones' name for show for show. And uh, Cameron can be nice when he when he wants to be. He was just they was just un- under prepared for what was what came out there. And after that, it was like, like my man Fat Joe said the very next day. Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> the price don't go up, man. And of course, you know what I'm saying Kanye ended up putting Jadakiss <laughs> on that that Donda album. You know what I'm saying so. I see people in in the chat hashtag free busy ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Busy is some bone thugs when Bobby Brown was the new addition. <laughs> Man, you just you just feel you just feel terrible about it. But I mean, well, look, uh, box. What you got going, man? Uh, we we we'll, we'll try to keep it a little traditional, but just in case you want to bring something to the fold. Um, let's see. I haven't been on here in a couple weeks, so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I can give you a quick synopsis of the last couple weeks of my life, I suppose. Um, bathroom Reno still a work in progress. Um, saw Ghostbusters, cried a lot. Um, had a doctor's appointment for the first time in two years. Not good. Got a, a follow up doctor's appointment scheduled for when we come back from Chicago. Okay. Um, probably going on meds, so uh, not a good time here at the home front on that. Um, oh no! Uh, it says busy's back. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> he's free. <laughs> he look like he's wearing like Michael Jackson's Thriller suit. That's not him. That's a uh, that's what you call. It. That's one of the three six dudes. <laughs> oh shit! Oh. Sorry, I just glanced down. <laughs> um, been playing a lot of Halo. So have I. I'm a. I'm not bad at Halo. How about I'm you? Pretty good at Halo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my um, my KD right now is definitely above a one, which is pretty solid. Um, it's way. Is my KD in Halo is twice what it is in Call of Duty. I'll say that much. Okay. Okay. I, I've definitely carried some straight. So here, here's like the other night I hopped on like um, 
basically I've kind of abandoned my Call of Duty group because they consistently just want to keep playing Call of Duty. Yes. And I'm like, fuck this game. I want to play Halo. I bought this fucking system to play Halo. I'm playing motherfucking Halo with or without you. <laughs> so I hopped on the other night and I was doing some solo ranked queues, right? And I end up like, I played like six or seven matches with no one had a microphone. Carried a bunch of people on my back to victory. And then I play a match, and there's, like, one dude's like, hey, anyone got a mic? And I was like, well, fuck it, I got this mic. So I, I turned it on. I'm like, yeah, I got a mic. So then me and him pop off. But, like, it's more, like I pop off a little more than him. We end up winning. And then, like, before the, like, they, like, kick us out of the queue to the next game, he's like, hey, do you want to you wanna team up? And then it kicks us out before I can, like, answer him, right? Yeah. So it's like, I don't know this dude. <clears throat> I just, like... We played a game together, right? But I was like, well, he asked. I ain't playing with nobody right now. I'm like, fuck it. So then I couldn't remember his name when I got back to, like, the menu. But then he sent me an invite. Nice. So I accepted it. He's like, oh, you want to keep playing? I was like, yeah, fuck it, man. I don't care. So we played a couple more games with Random Strangers. Um, I think we won, like, every game. Then my buddy Tommy was in the queue when we came out of the one game, so he joined up with us, and we played for a little while. And so then, like, that dude ended up adding me on Xbox Live, like, to play more in the future. Still don't cool. know his name, but, you know, I know his Xbox name now. It's, that's kind of the equivalent of, like, you uh, you go play basketball and you meet a new friend. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, I a lot of people in my life that I've known over years was met either from, like... Awkward. So he asked me at one point what state I lived in, yeah. and then I answered, but I think I answered him as it, like, it changed over from the lobby to the, the game menu, and so I don't think he heard me, and then, like, okay. we just didn't, like, pick it up from there. Um, if I talk to him again, I'll ask him his name and where he's from and shit, but, like, it, I think his mic might have died by the time we got to the last game, because I played, like, I think this was on, like, Thursday of last week? No, wait. It was Wednesday, I think. I played from like six until like midnight, and uh, I think his, his I think his mic died on the last game because I didn't hear him. And then I was like, "All right, dude, I'm leaving. I'll, I'll see you later, or whatever." Like he never said shit. So, and he ain't been on since I like the last couple of times I played. Um, I do it for love of money right now, <laughs> <laughs> and it sound real good. Uh, so I just, I just brought the screen up. I want I want to tell you what I, what I what this I, I actually posted this on Twitter the other day. <laughs> it's probably the best game I've ever had in my fucking life. Twenty kills, eight deaths, two assists, two killing sprees, killing sprees. You know what I'm saying? Like five enemies without dying. Twice I did that in that game. I had a uh, uh, assault the assault rifle of uh, the badge. I had the backslap badge twice. I had. I, I I just I I did I've never had a better game in my life than that game so right there. That that particular night that I'm talking about that I this happened. Yeah. The first couple of like like two of the first three matches I played were like uh, capture the flag matches I think. I I did so fucking good that I screen capped my like my kills deaths and assists and I sent it to my Call of Duty buddies. Yeah. So the the first one that I sent them. 29 kills, 22 deaths, 11 assists. Bruh. Second one, 23 kills, 13 deaths, 11 assists. I I have I have been playing Halo since the OG Halo on Xbox. Where, you know, on, on Xbox. I mean, I guess this video game talk kind of early in this episode. We did the same thing me and Ant was talking the one day. We 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 pulled video game talk a little earlier than normal, but it just it's super fun to play. I have a good time. I, I pay for the battle pass. I didn't get the premium battle pass, but I did pay for the battle pass. I gave I me. I gave one that, that let me skip like twenty levels. I, I got the the nine dollar one, so not, I didn't, I didn't get the. I, I, mean, I, I, this, yeah. I bought the thirty dollar one. Okay. Because yeah. I know that I'm gonna be playing it. Like the whole fucking point, and this is why like I don't think my Call of Duty buddies understand was that like I played Call of Duty with them because like yeah I wanted to play with them, but I played Call of Duty mainly because it was the thing out and I didn't have Halo yet. Halo got fucking held back for a year. I bought the fucking Xbox. I paid almost a thousand dollars. For this Xbox with these controllers and this memory card, all this shit, so yeah. that I can fucking play Halo. Halo's out now. Yeah. I don't give a fuck that Call of Duty map is coming out next week. The thing I want <laughs> is now out. 
the whole point. Like, yeah, the reason you bought this bitch was is here finally. Yeah, so like, a year late. I'm, in fact, I'm gonna be playing Halo, and like this rank system has got me fucking hooked. Like I'll hop on there and play with random strangers trying to level up like my my ranking. Like yeah. I don't give a fuck. Like. It's Did not put, ideal, but, you know, like, if I have to do that, I'm going to do it. Like, I don't hate it. Like, I like going into these games with these strangers and being the one with the most fucking kills. Like, yeah, I, like, these youngsters need to learn that I've been around <laughs> since the OG Halo. I pre-ordered the original Xbox, and one of my three games in my bundle was Halo 1. I've yeah. been down with Master Chief since day one. Y'all don't know what the fuck it's like to shoot a motherfucker from across the map with a pistol. I do. <laughs> oh, I got that. I'm, I'm okay with this pistol, but that pistol is not the old school pistol. Yeah, it's it's better, though, than it had been in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, I've been having to get used to, like, the equipment and shit. Because, like, I didn't really play Halo 5 multiplayer online. I, yeah. I, I hopped on maybe for, like, an hour once. But I, I only did the campaign. And then I didn't play, like, o, uh, DST or whatever and Reach yeah. and all that shit. So, like, I think the last Halo game I played, like, with other people was, like, Halo 3 maybe, a little bit. But it was mostly a lot of Halo 1 and Halo 2. So, like, I had to, I've had i been having to learn how to properly use, like, the grapple shot and the repulsor and that kind of shit. Yeah. So, uh, the, the grapple shot both is dope and pisses me off because motherfuckers just spider man around the map. I'm like, yeah. motherfucker! <laughs> But I do I, I I do enjoy it. Uh, did you play the, the 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 Fiesta maps for that for that uh that samurai costume? Yeah, I I think I unlocked like seven of the of the things. Okay. So I got like that the, the armor and then like a couple of, like the XP passes and stuff. Yeah. Um, I know it's coming back like uh, next month and then it's gonna come back again. So I imagine they probably broke it up into pieces because like the the challenges and shit like you can only swap so many. And yeah. like I wasn't getting all the Fiesta ones, so uh, there. This first season is gonna go real, real, real long, which is another reason I was like, "Well, why bother paying for the extra levels? I'll just, I'll just get there in due time." And so I've just been, I, it's been a real delight to be playing Halo again, and mm-hmm. and like so I've been having a great time. If with we it. weren't doing this right now, this is, that's what I would be doing. Yeah, for sure, it's right there. I've not played Halo today, and, and, and trust me, I played a lot of Halo this week already. <laughs> Oh good. Well, you I mean, let me know you when you get on. Right? Well, I'll, I'll see when you pop on. I'll just shoot you an invite, and we can just go. We can just go out here and 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 and, and, and pop pop. So yeah, so like good. I'm I'm gonna go to the monsters the hockey game tomorrow for a little bit because my buddy got a like he he's a season ticket holder, and when the lockdown happened, they gave them an option of either taking their season ticket money back or mm-hmm. keeping it in and then getting a free suite when everything opened back up. So we've got a free mm. suite for the game tomorrow night. Have you ever been to Sweet for a Monsters game? Not for a Monsters game, but I have for uh, wrestling. <clears throat> yeah. And I've been in like the lower box, like Dan Gilbert's Sweet for a Cavs game before. They feed you good. They get they get some, they, they do some decent <laughs> yeah. food at the Monster games. I mean, like, because when I had the Cavs season tickets, I got to go to a bunch of like like events that they did, and they they feed you the like the same kind of shit all the time. It's like mac and cheese, chicken tenders, yeah. like normal like convention food. Yeah, like the decent. pretzels with with the queso cheese. Yeah, it's a decent quality. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's not terrible. It's just I'm saying it's not like don't expect a wide variety. Expect like you know like better fast food. Yeah. Like some uh, burger sliders, that kind of shit. Yeah. Do you apparently mean they good did, food they did, fast? Apparently they did bring out uh, Young Easy for love of money. So uh, we called that oh, shit. Oh, that's dope. Oh. <laughs> just want y'all to be aware we did call that shit. Thank you. Profit here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the I guess like uh, the moral of what's been going on with me, there's been like a lot of ups and downs. But uh, if you're looking to play Halo with me, fucking hit me up because uh, your boys turned it into a Halo god. <laughs> <laughs> Clapping at these fools, y'all not ready for it? Oh my goodness gracious, Gabriel, man, we, we, here we are, sir. It's your time to shine. Tell me of what. Well, I mean, uh, not much to report since we haven't had too many adventures since uh, the last uh, on the road segment. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. This this has been this has actually been the, the the like let's cool off for a little bit and make further plans for further adventures uh, section of your of your journey. So yeah, plus I'm working this week. Yeah, so it's hard to have adventures when the fucking sun goes down. We're right uh we're right across the border of the the uh, time zone. 
Okay, so, so you're just so into the, Central? Yeah, so the sun goes down around 4.30. So it gets yeah. dark really early. <laughs> sun's, get, sun's getting real low, big sun's guy. Sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> 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 oh, and a lot man. Of places, and a lot of places around here close early. They don't... They don't we had to go to this barbecue place for a late lunch, or a, well, late lunch, early dinner. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was Phil's. It's supposed to have the best butts in the... Uh, you guys would hate it. It's all swine. It's not that we would hate it. We just wouldn't eat there. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I would like to warmly quote myself in saying that I respect pork. I just don't eat it. Because it's got hooves. Not because, like I mean... <clears throat> More because like of what Ice Cube said. Move animal. Oh, okay. Your eyes got real wild. What's going on, T? I am sending it in Twitter DMs. Please go to Twitter DMs and read what I just sent you and uh, be astounded like I was. Uh oh. Okay. <sighs> that is gross. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that is gross. <sighs> that is a uh, that is for us. Although that might be your show art. <laughs> mm. I'm going to oh I'm going to I save this image to on it. and tuck it away, and that might be your show art. That's all I'm saying. Good lord. We'll see if my brain remembers to, to do this. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah, but... So, uh, yeah, uh, we've been kind of just chilling out. Uh, how, how, was, how, how has work been in this environment? It's <laughs> interesting. A lot, a lot of swirling around... A lot of things are swirling around me while I'm trying to uh, look at papers. And, and study them and it's not easy so it's hard to concentrate uh how much is your degree coming in handy with this shit right here are you like fuck yeah i've been waiting eh, a, a non-lawyer could be doing what i'm doing right now but it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's flexible i think i'm gonna uh, take next week off okay because it's uh we got a moving day on tuesday okay and Wait, so you can just pick and choose when you work? Yeah, I, I, I jump on a project, or I don't jump on a project. Huh. That's I'm nice. like, I'm, I'm, I'm just genuinely in, interested about, like, the, the dynamic of it all. It's got flexible hours. You just, you, it, 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 the system's open from, like, this time to this time, and you work, like, a capped amount of hours during that time. Uh, so you can't, like, sit on there and work, like, 12 hours in one day? Oh, you could. That's the cap. Oh, shit. Yeah. So you could, like, theoretically do, like, three 12-hour days and then pull the, the fucking anchors up and then roll off for a couple days and go, like, sightseeing and mountain hiking and shit and then drop anchor again and, like, knock out some more files and shit? I guess it could. Yeah. I didn't do that. Because, like I said, the short days, and we wanted yeah. to do some stuff. The kids get restless. They don't understand. My daughter mm -hmm. is not excited that I'm working. <laughs> she should. She should be, because that's how you feed her. Yeah. <laughs> she don't understand that part. She said, I wish you could get paid for just existing. Like, like, same. Same, yeah. <laughs> you, never mind. How about this? You, you, you can, but what you need for that is generational wealth. Yeah. I was just about to say, or a bigger butt. <laughs> I got a decent sized butt, but no one wants to see it on Instagram. I don't know. You don't you know that. You won't know until you try. Remember, a dude sent me his penis one time. Anything is possible. Yeah. A moment like this. <laughs> Some people wait a lifetime. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Like, think don't we think got John? Well, there you go. Bone just brought out Lil John. After, after, 3 6 brought out Lil Wheezy. Oh, man. Are they going to bring out Mariah? Is she coming? 
gonna do the break breakdown. <laughs> oh my god, they brought up Mariah Carey and did a breakdown. Some amino breaks. They break me on down. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? Um, one of my favorite songs of all time, and I don't even like really fuck with Mariah Carey. Um. You gotta be careful, man. That was my number one boo on Spotify this year. Oh, okay. <laughs> that uh, that particular maxi single, which is breakdown. That's what it's there for. But mm-hmm. the side B of that bitch, or the extra boy on the CD, was Rooftop with Mariah and Mob and Deep. Mob Deep, yeah. Done. I brought that. I got that bitch over, over here on the shelf. You know what I'm saying? I got the CD over in the drawer, but I got the record over here on the on, in the singles joint. I bought that bitch off of fucking uh, Discogs. I'm yeah, that's my joint, man. That that came like new new, which, which I could not believe. It, it like I said that that bad boy still had the plastic on it. Ryan, old dirty <laughs> bastard, go back like babies and pacifiers. God, I, I I I don't like most of that album, man. Fantasy is a good song. I'm saying, I mean, I, I don't like I, I don't like uh, uh, nigga, please. That album, that old dirty album. Cause it ain't got really no rhythm production on it. It's all just like the Neptunes. Um, yeah. I do. I I I like um Good Morning Heartache. That's the only song I like on that album. Everybody loves uh, that Got album. Your Money. I don't. I think I I don't I don't know. I like Khalees as a person. I don't know if I like her singing. <laughs> Well, I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna make a joke off of that, but I got nothing. Um, yeah, I've been doing similarly yelling at the kids. They were like, they were just not in a mood to listen today. They were, they were like, "Fuck you, mom and dad. We're gonna do whatever we want today." Well, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like. Um... I I know how how the kids get like as far as like um you know this time of year I mean they're fucking excited about Christmas and you know like getting stir crazy a little bit too um I know I just gotta I got gotta take some time and do something with them is that project Pat if Pat came out I'm impressed because he ain't been there this whole time. Oh yeah, they brought Patrick Pitt out. Wave the white flag now, Bone. <laughs> well, so so the people in the, as I've watched the chat go by, people say Bone's response game has been on point. Like okay. so, basically, you know, what I'm saying three six throw a throw a punch, Bone come back and throw a you know throw the right or, or weave it just so. So apparently, it's a good versus. Oh man, I forgot about Notorious Thugs and um. Whatever that song is, which is, with, uh, which is why they, which is what they said why they let Busy back out because <laughs> of the, okay. the notorious, no, th- notorious thugs verse. Isn't this like the, just so Cleveland though? Like we dig ourselves a hole and we kind of like try and claw ourselves out. Correct. Like, yeah. it's, I mean, sometimes we, we won, won, sometimes we, we, we don't. But we settled say... down three one. That it, it's it's funny. It's funny to me that that is, seems to be ingrained in, in us as a people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> down to our our rap acts. <laughs> Yeah, it can't win easy. We're not good playing from ahead. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. We I was just talking to my partner about that. Like, so she would, I she got up early and was um, working at like seven o'clock. She was like, I didn't get no work done yesterday. I started around nine, did double the amount of files. Coming from behind, it's just Cleveland. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just in us. It's just in us, man. How oh, fun. That's why I'm glad I was born in Shaker Heights. <laughs> just kidding. They're throwing money into the crowd right now. Oh, they're doing chicken hit. Oh, man. Jamal Hill text uh, oh, tweeted that the busy that? bone really fouled out of the verses. <laughs> oh, my joke. <laughs> Caught that technical, that, that 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 technical what level two, whatever that shit is called. I kind of made that joke though. <sighs> I should have put it on Twitter. Great, great minds think alike. Yeah, 
if you, if you feel like that, um, you need to to go ahead and um and pop that off on Twitter real quick. Uh, yeah, I don't have her followers, so of course mine's not gonna get as much traction. Ratio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my but, god! Uh, I don't know. I thought, I, and I've been on Twitter a little bit lately. I thought I had some solid jokes, but just got nothing out of them. I always got Tayrell to like uh, something I t- tweeted out, so you know, and always look to your I'm... friends for for uh, verification. Val, sorry, validation. I uh, didn't go on Twitter uh, for long stretches, so. Um, and I do not have notifications set up on everybody's account, so there's a strong possibility you were tweeting shit and I never saw it. Yeah, like um, when when T was talking about the whole notification with um with stuff, I got I got that little bell check, but I never get notifications for anything. Hmm. Hmm. Only for shit that like I looked at once, <laughs> like oh you like Granny Smith apples? Well, guess what? You gonna hear about it every seven minutes. <laughs> I, I do get some weird notifications. I thought, and I thought my joke about critical race theory was solid, <laughs> solid. I put the YouTube video of uh, of that scene from uh, "I'm Gonna Get You Sucker" on there. The big toe? No, <laughs> where the where the white kid uh, comes in and reads your report <gasps> about Abraham Lincoln. They brought out Tasha. Oh wow, <laughs> man, he was flabbergasted. <laughs> I, 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 as a member of this podcast, vote right now that this name of this episode be Aunt Tasha. <laughs> Aunt Tasha. <laughs> Look, it's Ruggish Ball. You had to do it. You had to do it to him. Yeah. Oh, my God. Straight Gug and loving these people because it's so real. Oh my god. Love it. You love it. It's the thuggish ruggish bomb. How come like you got volume and I don't? I just turned mine up a little bit, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, like I literally have my volume on my phone on and ain't shit coming out. Oh you have I, it uh I, you have a Bluetooth to something, like uh, uh an embarrassing comedy where you, no, uh, you my play porn and off. Like that episode of Love when he caught, got caught masturbating. Well, yes. <laughs> oh, there we go. There you go. The audio was broken on that particular yeah. feed. I had to refresh. Oh, sweet Jesus. Um, Gotta be down to bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, like... I think I, I don't know what people's opinion of me on this show is because like, and by that I mean like obviously like, I'm the white guy amongst a group of people who are not white. Yeah. yeah, and so like, I, I wonder sometimes if people who listen to this show because like let's be real, most of the people who listen to this show are not white. Um, hey, I just told you, Mike Fowler, white guy, who's just talking about how good our show is. So, I know. I'm not saying white people <laughs> don't listen to the show. I'm saying the majority of our audience, from what I've gathered, is not white. You're so, white people on the Star Show. I think um, <laughs> most of the people who listen are are white, and most of them are females. <laughs> Mathematically, that, that all checks out. Yeah. But go on. What, what, what do you think they think of you? Where I was situation? going, where I was going with this was, I wonder sometimes, like, if people think that, like, maybe I'm like putting up like a false persona or something when it comes to this. And I say that because I feel like my Spotify of the year, top five artists like Mm -hmm. perfectly encapsulates just how diverse I am as a person. Because I, I kind of feel like I understand what you're saying, but you're, you're not giving our audience credit. We've been doing this for eight years, Dan. Nobody like pe- pe- the people who, who who really listen. They they know your heart. They they get what you're saying. 
I, I kind of look at it like, like the like um, what's the the Joe Budden show? And then they got that white dude on there, and people are like, "What's this white dude doing on here?" <laughs> oh, Rory. Yeah. Like, like, what's Rory's deal? What's Rory doing there? Like, what's Lunchbox doing on this show? What's his deal? But yeah, but just just like I mean, I don't I don't know I don't know that show, but I don't I don't care what anybody says. Every time I see. Like the one white dude in the club, I'm like that dude just must be cool. <laughs> I don't ever think yeah. like that. Like, <laughs> well, I, I brought it up because like, obviously, like in my the way I grew up, I've been in a lot of different at, like neighborhoods with a lot of different ethnicities. I've been experienced. I've I've been experienced a lot of shit that I would say most white people don't experience. And I think my Spotify top five. Per, like, per- perfectly encapsulated that, and I'm gonna read them here for the for the, our view our listeners because I, I imagine most of them didn't see my Instagram story, which is probably the only Instagram story I made in 2021. <laughs> but but before you start that, let's also not not forget that you had Bojangles before I did. So continue. <laughs> yeah, gotta give me that card. Um, <laughs> so. Do you want me to go from number five up to number one? Or yes, number you, one? you got to do it old school. Okay, so my, my, my number five most listened to artist of 2021, rest in peace, DMX. No. Number four, which was shocking to even me, Chris Brown. I must have been on like a, like a Chris Brown kick from back in the day with like some Run It and Kiss Kiss and the shit like that. Cause, kiss um, Kiss is a is a is a fabulous song. <laughs> Yeah, and like like um, forever, like Chris Rock. I mean, uh, Chris Brown was dropping like fucking heartfelt bangers when he was young, and then like he kind of had a little bit of a metamorphosis as it went on. But like, I love that old lovey dovey shit. Number three was wrestling entrance theme songs WWE. Okay. Number two, number two, Slipknot, like death metal. Number one, Mariah Carey. I've got like like a fucking Neapolitan of music taste here in my top five. How many how many artists does it say you listen to? Like different artists. Uh, I don't remember if I screen capped that, but I can go back and look probably. It says I listen to twenty eight different genres of music this year. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to get you my my genres. Uh, let's see. It says. Oh, like um, the different ones. Uh, my top genres of the year: number five, boy band; number four, wrestling; number three, pop punk; number two, dance pop; and number one, new metal. Hmm. That that uh, yeah, you are very uh, um <clears throat> a very pop person. You love pop music. Pop pop. Let's see. Twenty twenty one wrapped. Uh, let's. Speed this man, I can't up a believe this year about to be fucking over, man. Yeah, that was a fast year. Was it just me? It's what? been a fast two years. Yeah, the, it's been it's been it's been not leaving the house pretty much, <laughs> you know, for no time. I'm gonna be honest, man. Like, outside of a few things, this has probably been one of the worst years of my life. Oh. Yeah, I can understand that. Oh, fair enough. Like, I obviously, like, life isn't all good and it's not all bad, but, like, it started. Know. I feel like your grandma went in the hospital in January, right? Uh, November. Okay, so, yeah, so it's like, it just, it just started. 2021 was like, I'm about to fucking kick Dan's chest in. <clears throat> yeah, so. both my grandmothers passed away. Uh, two of my pet, my cats passed away. Uh, a couple weeks ago, the family dog got put down. Um, my health has been steadily declining as I've just been at home doing nothing. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, two years battling depression and shit. Like, it's been, it's been tough. Yeah. I, like, I, I can see the the light coming, though, a little bit. Like, you know, we're going to Chicago next week, and Christmas I'll be in Green Bay. And this morning we bought tickets to um, wrestling at the Wolstein Center at the end of January. Um, I've got tickets to go see Bill Burr in April. Um, you know, I've been working on some stuff here on the house, like so. Like you know, I'm trying to get out of the the doldrums of 2021, and you know, get find a little happiness and a little joy, and keep on moving. Very good. I agree. 
45 different genres. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I know we don't usually do this, but, like, do you have any, like, um, like New Year's resolutions that you want to try to do for the coming year? Not really, because, like, I don't really believe in the whole resolution thing, because I feel like most people don't stick to it anyway. Um, well, we talk about you. I know, but, like, I... I've, I've done that shit in the past where, like, this year, my resolutions do this and they last, like, a day. My, I'm just... All I can really do is take things one day at a time. Is I literally had this conversation with my buddy last night because his problem is, like, he tries to, like, help too much and push too fast. And it was, like, I was trying to explain to him, it's, like, with all the shit going on right now, I could only work on fixing one fucking thing at a time. Which I've chosen to be my diet. Like, obviously, yeah, I want to get back into working out. But it's, like, it's hard enough to try and, like, quell my intake and and monitor that shit on top of also trying to, you know, get back in the gym. Like, it's like I can only do one, fight one battle at a time. Once I feel like I have the one battle kind of under control, then I'll work on the next one. But it's like if I try and do too many things at once... I'm just going to fuck them all up and I'm going to be like, even more frustrated. So it's like I was trying to explain to him. It's like it's not that I'm not planning on doing this shit and like we'll get to it. But I'm like you got to learn to have a little fucking patience because I can only do this shit one day at a time. Yeah. yeah. yeah I just I don't I, I like said same same as it ever was, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got to I, ha- I literally have to get my fiber up. That is a diagnosis from my medical professional saying, yo, gutty works look like you got to get some more fiber in your life. So I got to eat better. I got to do it. And it's been a, it's been a, it's been a tough week around the way, but, but I will, I will, I will you know, get it dialed in and we'll start with diet. It's a good place to start. In fact, it's the one thing I got real good control over. You know what I'm saying? So we start with diet and we go from there. But I'm also going to totally drink a cake shake next week when I go to Chicago. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the problem. It's like we're going to Chicago and like obviously, yeah, I'm going to eat deep dish pizza and, and have some fun and shit. But yeah. then I, we come back on like on Saturday, Monday morning, I got to turn around and go have a fucking blood pressure appointment. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, because here's the thing. Like we had to get our wellness exams for uh, work for the year. Otherwise, they were going to raise our insurance premiums. They, they threaten that every year. Last year, they, they waived it because, you know, COVID. So this year, we had to have it done by the 19th. I tried to make an appointment a couple of days prior at the Minute Clinic, but they were all booked up. So, like, I literally did my appointment the afternoon of the 19th, like the, that last day. And the, basically, it comes down to, like, all the work I had done working out for, like, you know, not the last two years. The last two years, I haven't been done shipping, sit at home and eat. But the two years prior to that, I had gotten my blood pressure down back to, like, kind of, like, normal. I was treading in the right direction. Everything was going well. Well, the last two years, I basically undid every fucking thing I did, I worked for prior to that. So I'm back into, like, not good territory. My weight's back up. Like, my, like, blood shit wasn't, like, horrible, but it wasn't as good as it could be. So it's like I got to get my diet back right. I got to get weight off me, yada, yada, yada. Which, like, you know, it's like you knew, you know, like, you're not oblivious to who you are, but, like, you don't know how bad it is until, like, you, like, you go and get looked at and have a conversation and shit, but you know it's bad. Yeah. So, like, it was basically she was, like, talking, like, oh, you know, well, you should, like, see if maybe we can put you on something, like, uh, in the meantime until you get your shit right. Like, because I told her, I'm like, you know, I was doing good and then... The world went to hell, and I've been depressed for the better part of two years, and my f- grandma's all died this year. I'm like, I'm not, I've not had a good time. Yeah. And I'm like, but I know how to do things, and I know what to do. It's just the problem is I ain't been doing it. So she was like, basically like, well, you should make an appointment, come back, and uh, we'll, we'll run the numbers again in a couple weeks, and like, you know, we could put you on something to just help you in the temporary until you get it under control, and then you just like can get off of it later and I was like look if you do not yourself take the initiative to make this appointment for me right here and right now there is no way in hell I will go home and follow up with you 
because I know myself and I will go home and I will tell myself that I've got this. I'll do it myself. And then we'll be in the same seat a year from now and I'll either be dead or I'll be, it'll be worse. So if I'm going to come back here in a month, you have to schedule this right now here in front of me and give me the appointment. Otherwise I won't be here. Yeah. And that's what we did. I have an appointment for the 13th at 10 a.m. Okay. I'll go there, you know, I'll get on whatever I got to do. I'll get eventually uh, work on getting right and uh, hopefully get this shit back under control so that I could live a long, uh, fulfilling life. Just a goal. Fuck with it. So not necessarily a uh, resolution, eh? but a goal. Maybe we worded yeah. it that way. You know what I'm saying? I can't resolve to do shit, but I can try my da- my damnedest, you know. I know Dan is like already trying, like like we, like we were talking about the I mean, oatmeal before you started. Like he's starting with the little changes. He he's on his way. Like I like one of the things I want to start doing is I think I want to. Um, I know it's gonna be really really hard, but I want to get off dairy and um, and and. And chicken. Yeah, the dairy and chicken. You eat? Uh, You're running out of things more, to eat. Just a more plant-based diet, you think? Yeah, more plant-based diet. Uh, yeah. I I personally like veggies and shit, like like the the vegan or vegetarian meals or vegan meals and all that kind of stuff. Like, I like eating meat. Don't get me wrong, but like, I'm also not one to scoff at that other stuff. Like, there's good food. Like that fucking. Um, Butternut squash shit that you sent us earlier from Solo, I eat mm-hmm. the shit out of that. Yeah. I don't know what that shit tastes like, but it looked good as fuck. I mean, butternut squash pretty much just tastes like a sweet potato. Oh well, fuck yeah, I eat the shit out of that. That looked delicious. Like I love beans and rice. Like that was right up my alley, you know. Hey. That's, 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 I mean, yeah, man, you was the, you, you've been uh, the vegetarian, vegan kind of back and forth, tippy toppy, man. Well, any advice, any advice for the, 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 for, you know, the, 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 just doing a little better with, as we lean toward, uh, well, there's that, that cow, that, that what's this pronounced? Chow cheese? That I thought was pretty good. What? Uh, <laughs> well, did you I say would, cow I cheese? Asking, no, it's 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 spelled like C A O. Damn it. Oh, oh, like cacao. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Was it like a like an imitation cheese or something? Yeah, and it's pretty good. This, this, Chow vegan this cheese always... slices. C H A O is what is, is that what it is? Or is yeah, it C-H-A-O. something? Okay. I just want to make sure. I'm about to go I'm about to try to go take a look. Uh, it's like nut based. Creamy texture, coconut based, and seasoned with fermented tofu. This creamy mm. plant based non jerry cheese delights your taste buds. Bold taste, regionally beloved spices and ingredients make chow creamery vegan cheese slices <clears throat> ideal for topping off any meal. Did I send you, Anthony, this um, YouTube channel, this vegan chef? Like, um, like one video I watched where he used a meat tenderizer on mushrooms. To use them to like cook like like uh, mushroom steaks or something like that. Um, if not, no. I'll have to dig that up because you I, have to I, send. I, I think, think you might like it. You sent me a um, I think a video of the, where they found the um, the 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 big old mushroom in the forest. Okay, yeah, this wasn't that. Okay. I'll have to dig that up. I think you might like this stuff. Like the the guy like uses like he's a vegan chef, but he makes like imitation steak and stuff like using mushrooms and stuff like that and it all looks pretty good i think i subbed to his channel so i'll I'll go look for it okay so i have uh and this has been something on my mind for a long time about just just plant-based stuff i don't ever need the replacement per se feel me like i don't need to eat chicken because i miss chicken or something like that in fact i don't i just i try to avoid the the replacement uh plant-based items like I don't like I don't like uh, I don't like uh, impossible meat because it tastes like meat, and I'm not here for that party. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I do like uh, you know a, a Boca burger, which don't taste like nothing but I mean seasoning. I guess is what it tastes like spices. So I'm kind of uh, 
I don't really need a. Uh, I need some chow to get over my cheese obsession. Because what I'm not getting rid of cheese. I fuck with cheese, but uh, I'm just like I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a replacer kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? I just would rather go a whole different direction. I guess you know what I'm saying. Uh, if yeah. I'm going to try to eat vegan or vegetarian, if if that's up something ever I, I'm trying to do, I'm just like I don't need you to give me a vegan steak. Because I don't eat steak to begin with. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing I miss or will need a replacer for. Yeah, like, I feel like some of it is more of, like, a kind of, like, helping you wean you off of some things. Mm -hmm. But then also, like, some of the imitation shit is just not even close to the original to the point where, like, like peanut butter, right? Natural peanut butter where the oil separates and all that shit. Yeah. I tried. I tried my damnedest to like that shit. It's not that it's bad, but it's just so much fucking work. And it's messy and just, I, I tried. I gave yeah. it a couple years of, of effort. I can't do it anymore. I yeah. went back to the fucking regular ass peanut butter with the palm oil or whatever and shit. I'm sorry, but it's like that's just one battle that I can't. I can't win. It's just not as good. I don't like it as much. I hate fucking opening the jar and having peanut oil fucking splash the counter and. The fucking jar is slipping out of your hand, and you're trying to stir this like unmovable object into this oil, and then it just separates. It's fuck that. Give me the unhealthy fucking raggedy peanut palm oil shit called peanut butter. Let's. I'll I'll take that as my one thing in life that like just is gonna fucking kill me. Well, so you know I've been working on trying to get this fiber game up, right? So I was at the store the other day, and I was like, okay, you know everybody keeps telling me steel coat nuts is the move, and so forth. I'm like. Let's look. Let's take a look. Packages in hand. You know, my little, my little, you know, my, my Quaker joints, you know, my, 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 my cinnamon raisin Quaker joints right here in my hand. The steel cut joints in my hand right here. And there's one fucking uh, gram of fiber difference in steel, in steel coat, steel cuts favor. And I'm just like, well, I'd rather just eat my damn cinnamon and spice fucking raisin yeah. shit over here and be, be cool. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Anthony gave me that fucking electric kettle that night we all went out for Gabe's going away. Yeah. That thing is one of the best things I've ever owned for a kitchen utensil. <laughs> it is it, it's fucking amazing. Nice. Yeah. Like so, like um, I did like a Sam's Club order last week. Sam's Club had fifty packets of Quaker oatmeal in a box for, on sale for seven dollars. Yeah, I bought three of them, bitches. I have just, in my house right now almost 200 packets of oatmeal. <laughs> just waving them hoes, ready for it. So, what, yeah, like what I do is I use two packets of Quaker oatmeal. Yeah. And then Anthony had me buy like just the regular ass, like normal oats in like the, yeah. the tub. I'll pour some of that on there. And then I'll take like Whole Foods sells frozen cut up fruit that yeah. you just keep in the freezer. So, what I do is I like I had peaches in my shit this morning. I was using pineapple slices uh, last week. How's that then, with oatmeal? Hmm? How was that with oatmeal? Pretty pineapple. good. Really? I liked yeah. it. Like, yeah, and then I got, like, I ran, I used the last of the peaches this morning, so now I have a bag of blueberries in the freezer. Mm. So I'll, like, you know, uh, tomorrow, like, if I make oatmeal, I'll just put blueberries in it. So I just, I take two packets of Quaker oats, add some of the regular ass from the, I just dump some of the tub in there. Uh, then I put some of the fruit in. It's sweet because it's like already pre-cut and shit. Yeah. So I just like take it out of the bag, roll the bag back up, throw it back in the freezer. So each bag gets me like four or five different breakfasts out of it. Nice. And then just I use the hot water. Like when I pour it on, it, it unfrosts the fruit instantly, soaks up the oats. I love when the oats get like fucking mushy and there's like that like <laughs> oat slime everywhere in the bowl and shit. Yeah, yeah like I've, I've never been one to hate oats, but like – the cost, how cost efficient it is, and for how tasty you can make it, and how easy it is to make, it's just a fucking winning breakfast. Uh, my uh, kettle, also also purchased for me by one Anthony uh, AP over here, uh, is it is a <laughs> it's just how I move at this point. About ten minutes before we ever start any recording at this point, I walk in my kitchen, I click my little my little switch. And now I have my, 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 my water going, and I make a couple. And uh, that's how I, get my, it's how I get my, my voice warmed like, up for production. How, like, clickable that button is. Yeah. And then the blue light comes on, and yes. then you the bubbling and the light goes off. You're like, I got hot water. You know what you got to do one time? Just one time, just because it's a good time. Set your camera up, put it on time lapse, click the button, and let it film the whole process. It's amazing to watch. 
Just want you to know that. <laughs> you do your little time lapse photography of that shit. Oh, um, a, a quick leap back over to uh, 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 Spotify. Top artists. Kanye West. Oh, I, I, start, I started wrong again. Number five, Little Brother. Number four, Drake. Number three, Benny the Butcher. Number two, Vince Staples. Number one, Kanye West. My top songs. Butcher coming, nigga. Family Ties, which is that, that song Kendrick can't drop with his cousin, Baby King. Yes. Uh, are you uh, are you uh, with that? Which is off of uh, Vince Staples' uh, uh, self-titled album, Vince Staples. Lil Fade, which is also off Vince Staples' album, uh, Hurricane, which is uh, off of Kanye West's uh, Donda album. And my number one song of the year, She's a Runner, She's a Track Star. I listen to that song a lot. <laughs> Who made that song? Track stars by uh 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 what's his name? Like uh Moots Moots? Oh, hold on, I'll tell you who Track Star is. While while you're doing that, the thing I found interesting about my list was that my number one most played song of the year, uh, the group wasn't even in my top five. <laughs> my number one played song of the year was uh, Legend Has It by Run the Jewels. Hmm. Nice. Fuck with it. It said I played that song 117 times this year. Trackstar is by Mooski. M-O-O-S-K-I. Yeah, he was on uh, Walla... Um, uh, what's it? Walla, uh, what, whatever Nick Cannon show is. Wild and Out? Wild and Out? Yeah, Wild and Out. He was on there last night. I heard him sing that song, but I, like, but I didn't know who it was. Uh, the, the live feed ended... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I turned it off, so I assume, I assume they wrapped it up and, and, and kept it moving. She's a runner, runner, runner. <laughs> she's a runner, she's a track star. Oh, my goodness. Also, he had another song that I fuck with a lot, too, that I enjoyed. So it's like, that. I, Mooski uh, was, was, was a good time. And uh, again, I was, again, we just talked about it, we just talked about it on uh, Cadillac on Mars. My, uh, my favorite album this year was uh, uh, Vince Staples' Vince Staples. <coughs> And uh, I'm I'm glad that it, it kind of is represented as such in my even in my my Spotify list of of Jones I play so I got I got down with it. Uh, that Spotify recap I know it, it it's probably saying all kinds of things about the you know how technology is evil and how they got their hooks and all your shit. But I love that recap shit every year, and everybody was having a good time with the recap shit, and then almost immediately motherfuckers had to come and just ruin it for us by saying you know black woman invented that process and they didn't give her her shine and I was like damn why y'all got a shit on it make me feel bad having such a good time with my damn top five list of the year and I get it it's fucked up that Spotify's a shitty company but all companies are shitty and that's what capitalism is there's no ethical consumption under capitalism it can't be done this shit is a fucked up system to begin with all the way up sorry <laughs> you got a shit on us make us make it ruin this for our good time but you know that's what's up, man. <laughs> Anywho, man, let's uh let's let's keep it moving, man. You got, let's head on over to these mean streets of Reddit. Uh, we got one that I have to read. I have to read because it's from uh, uh the Silver Coke Key, but I'm gonna read you the other one, other possibilities. Would I be the asshole? Oh, you know we do. Mm. Each week we head to Reddit. Uh, we uh and we we venture to the the subreddit. Uh, am I the asshole? And we discuss if these people indeed are assholes. We've been doing it uh, for like a year and a half now. Vanessa uh, like was finding it, some amateur assholes. And I was like, I read them shits on the show. And uh, it became a popular thing. And now it's all over the internet. People getting 650,000 views on shit that we've been doing forever. <laughs> I am bitter. Not even pretending to not be bitter. But it's okay. We read these shits. We have a good time. We clown. And we decide if people are assholes beforehand. And then we decide if we were right after the fact. So, first one's first. Would I be the asshole for quitting my job and potentially leaving my disabled boss in a tough spot? No. Am I the asshole for refusing to apologize to my husband in writing after I canceled all his family invitations to a Christmas celebration at our house? <laughs> it's a lot going kind of assholey. Wow, this one has been removed since I pulled it earlier. And like I said, I pulled this probably made about three hours ago. Am I the asshole for uh, getting... I think uh, 3-6 Mafia is doing Stay Fly right now. Oh, right on. Am I the asshole for getting a, getting a surrogate when I'm fully capable of having a safe and healthy pregnancy? Mm, I like that one. 
and let's see. Am I the asshole for telling my parents that God didn't get my court case dismissed? <laughs> <laughs> this is an old one, and if and if we not if we not doing it this week, then we not doing it at all. This has been around for a while. This just was just one in the folder. Am I the asshole for not giving my daughter money for her field trip? Hmm. I'm gonna go with yeah. I, uh, I so, did, so did Reddit for the matter. Okay. <laughs> And this is the one uh, the, the the silver coke he sent us that so we have to read this one. It has since been deleted, but uh, I got I, I, I because uh, we were talking. They were uh, she was like I just she goes I, I made a point to copy it, and I'm like it's okay, uh, it's, it's it's okay. I'll copy it myself right now. So I already of uh, copied the uh, text of the uh, the the first letter, and the responses are still up on uh, on Reddit. And that is, am I the asshole for asking my wife to get rid of her blankie? That has a name I hate. Hmm. This one seems like an adventure, especially if the silver coke he sent it to us. Throw away for privacy. My 31 male wife, 34 female, has this little blanket that she's had since she was a baby. Her dad gave it to her when she was two, I think. For whatever reason, they named it. Its name is Benjamin. My wife loves this thing. She looked, she took it with her to college and she has studied abroad and when she studied abroad for a year, it's at all old and ratty, but she, but, but she still holds it sometimes. The problem with the name, she dated a guy named Ben in college. We met when she was 27. When we first got together, we told each other everything sexual we'd done with other people. And she'd done a lot with him. A lot of stuff I wanted to do, including something she said she didn't want to do again with me even though she did it with him. She said they never hooked up outside, but then I found pictures of her, of her, no, I found pictures on her hard drive while she was away that proved she lied. I was really pissed that she lied about, lied, but she apologized a lot and promised to tell me the truth from now on. But the damage was done. And just hearing his name makes me feel sick. Since we had our daughter one and a half years, my wife lets her play with Benjamin and takes pictures with her in this blanket. I hate seeing it and hearing its name, but my wife doesn't think it's a big deal. She says the blanket came along way before she ever met Ben and they have nothing to do with each other. She doesn't even think about Ben from college anymore and that he's not associated with the blanket. I feel like this is really dismissive and she doesn't care about my feelings because of course I associate Ben with the blanket. Here's the issue. We're packing up the apartment to move into a new place. And I asked her not to bring Benjamin to our new home. She can donate him or whatever, but I want to have a fresh start together without the bad reminder of her past. She got really upset and doesn't want to get rid of Benjamin. She says it's really special and it's not fair of me to ask her to throw away part of her childhood. But I feel like I'm her husband and she should care more about my feelings and how much it hurts me than something that, that me more than some blanket. In conclusion, and too long did not read, Am I the asshole for, for, for asking my wife to get rid of her blanket because it is named that triggers me about her ex and her line about her past? Yes, this guy's an asshole. Man. Jesus Christ, that was an adventure. Thank you, Silver Coke for putting us on to some hilarity. God, this yes, guy, you're an asshole. You're the, the scummiest piece of shit ever. make other dudes look bad, man. Yeah. Yeah. Bruh, I... I, I I don't know what to tell you, but you got to get the fuck over it or move on. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it, it, it's hard to put like your shit from somebody else onto the person you're with. That just it, it fucking poisons the thing you have. <coughs> it's like uh, I, I I get it. They 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 had a life before you, and I guess that's fucking with you because maybe you didn't have as much life as they had. But that ain't got shit to do with shit. And this woman loves her blanket, so let her love his blanket. This dude butt hurt because um, maybe her butt hurt. <laughs> An assumption, but 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 probably a logical one. Uh, so we got a couple of the glow in the dark boxes for this one. <clears throat> a couple. When it, when, it's, when it's more than one, you know it's some old some old fire shit. So let's uh, let's see. This one has. 19, 1, 2, 
19, looks like 21 uh, pieces of uh, flare. <laughs> and this one has, it looks like uh, 12. So we'll start with this one. Because frankly, so many deeply jealous, abusive, entitled people generally have less personality than a blanket or a towel and thus get incredibly territorial. It's also because people with this kind of stunted emotional state are incredibly threatened by the empathy and imagination and humanity and humanity. People who love their blankie or pet or can understand that an item or animal can be both important in itself and a proxy for other emotions, memories and feelings often linked to others, such as Benjamin is about the wife's parents and now her childhood and motherhood. It shows they are integrated people who understand nuance and the threads of a whole life. But jealous, externalizing, non-integrated, <laughs> non you made me do it types can only ever see Pinocchio as a puppet or a pile of wooden strings. They are angry that Pinocchio cannot come to life as a puppet for them and enraged and threatened that unlike the toy maker, they cannot use their humanity to see Pinocchio as the little puppet boy they nurture and get emotional growth back from because caring for even an inanimate object is a huge part of kindness whimsy, playfulness, and healthy behaviors for humans starting in childhood and progressing into adulthood. It, it, it may never react, but that teaches you to self-soothe and that it isn't all about you. It's a form of mirroring. The sheer vitriol some have for blanket, a towel, a drinking glass, socks, a candle, lasagna, is because their inanimate object mirrors back their shallowness of the stunted person. You cannot bullshit a towel into dis 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 uh, disguising your shortcomings. It exposes you so it becomes a proxy for how you want to put, punish this person for having the capacity for love or self-care or connection not solely focused on you. This is a form of ambient abuse designed to control, but really, once you see the pattern, you realize like the end of The Wizard of Oz, they are a pathetic person bested by a bit of bloody fabric. That person went in. I agree. The, the next man, this is the, it's the other glow in the dark one, and we'll wrap this particular one up, says, I don't think I can properly articulate exactly how asshole it is for you to think her doing a sexual act with another guy upsets you when she doesn't want to with you. Let me say it again. This very thought makes me want to scream, scream you're a dick from the rooftops. I've heard so many girlfriends talk about how this happens to them. And the guy never seems to understand that the fact that they think they're entitled to their body simply because they did once did it once is appalling. Maybe they were pressed into it. Maybe it was simple curiosity. Maybe it's associated with trauma and their boyfriend was sexualizing it. Regardless of how it happened, she was and is very clear about this boundary. And the fact that you are now upset about it, about that and being denied access to apply it to a childhood blanket is incredibly inappropriate. If she stuck a cucumber up there once, you say that that, that, that picture with an ex would, 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 would you ban her from feeding all cucumbers to your daughter? And do not try the whole she should care about me as a husband thing. She does, but not everything is about you. You may not agree with this, but I 100% wholeheartedly think you need to rethink how you think about your wife's body. You're the asshole. Man, like, um... Yeah, like I said, this, that's the kind of guy that makes the other guys just look bad. Yeah, I hope your wife divorces you. All I agree. Over. I, I, I hope that you are left to think about the, this the rest of your time and uh, don't get to see your kid as much as you want to. Fuck you. <laughs> Terrible fucking person. Uh, what was the other one, y'all? Uh, just, just when I agree with you, you make me disagree. You just uh, no, nah, man. I just, I just, I don't, I can't fuck with that shit, man. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Box sent us a video. I hope you get a paper cut. <laughs> Terrence <talking>? Howard. <laughs> <laughs> you ugly motherfuckers ain't finna be dissing me when yeah. I'm on motherfucking stage. 36 wow. Mafia brought out Terrence Howard. Oh, wow. <laughs> Turning his back on Cleveland. <laughs> oh yeah, my god it. yeah shouldn't he be uh, trying to uh, like sabotage uh, 3-6 Mafia show his loyalty to Cleveland oh, is uh, Terrence Howard from Cleveland yeah he's he was born Cleveland. in Chicago but he grew up in Cleveland ah. <laughs> Kanye West was born in Atlanta but grew up in Chicago there you go <laughs> yeah but he claimed Chicago yeah 
I mean, I've, I've been in Cleveland more than I've been, been anywhere else my entire life. I claim Cleveland wholeheartedly and full-throatedly. It's my set. <laughs> All right. Uh, the last one's uh, uh, Disabled Boss. Uh, Christmas Celebration. Uh, surrogate, when I'm healthy and don't really need a surrogate. Yeah, I, I like that one, but at the same time, I don't really... I, you know, it's a woman's choice. Or God didn't get my court case dismissed. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> it is it is incredibly long. Fascinating oh. that it is so long. But uh, let's get to it and we'll, 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 we'll wrap it all up. Am I the asshole for telling my parents that God didn't get my court case dismissed? My 23 male family is extremely religious and always has been. Church every Sunday, reading scriptures every night, praying before every meal, mission trips, no swearing or taking the Lord's name in vain, no alcohol, no premarital sex, etc. My entire extended family, too. Looking back, we all had this really toxic, holier-than-thou attitude, but I didn't know any different, so I just kind of rolled with it. I was a normal-ish kid, but in high school, I made a couple of big mistakes that landed me in court. Not a violent crime, is, is what this has in parentheticals. Had I been charged as an adult, I was looking at 8 to 13 years in prison. The whole mm. process was devastating to my family and my parents. But they were very proactive, and we lawyered up, found a therapist, and we jumped through all the hoops to get the case dismissed. I finished high school, and we never talked about it again. I was very, very lucky. When I left home for college, I stopped going to church. I wasn't bitter or anything. I was, I was just forming my own beliefs and opinions. But when my parents called each Sunday and asked how church went, I lied about going. I'm not proud of it, but I needed their money to stay in school. Over the last year, though, I've graduated, become both financially independent and less nervous about, about them finding out. Fast forward to Thanksgiving a couple weeks ago. I had been feeding up, feeling a lot of guilt from lying to them all the time. So I decided to come clean. I had, I, I said I had been going to, I hadn't been going to church. It wasn't sure how I felt about God. My parents replied with something to the effect of, we know that you know that the church is true and God worked a miracle to get you out of jail. And so you owe it to him to be a faithful member. <laughs> it was never my plan to go scorched earth, but something about their tone really rubbed me the wrong way. So I bluntly told them God didn't get me out of jail. It was the expensive lawyer they hired to defend me, and they didn't have the right to tell me that I believed in I, that what believe what to tell me what I believed. Going to church wasn't bringing me any peace, and I definitely wasn't going to spend the rest of my life going to church strictly out of guilt. I had come to terms with the mistakes I made, and had worked hard to move on. The rest of the conversation was awful. My mom was in tears. My dad asked how I could sleep at night, knowing that when I died, I would be with I wouldn't be with my family in heaven. I counted th that. I don't believe in an afterlife and that I don't need them to save me. I tried to show them some empathy saying that I wanted them in my life. I was grateful for everything they'd done and they were a good, they were, there were a lot of good things about being raised religious, but that it wasn't what I needed right now. I told them I'd be discreet in the front of the rest of the extended family. I packed up and left right after that. We haven't talked since. Part of me feels guilty that all the cards are on the table, but the other part wonders, if things would have been easier if I had just kept lying, am I the asshole? I think anybody's an asshole here. I don't think his parents are an asshole for having their faith and thinking that their faith and that faith sustains them. I don't think he's an asshole for deciding not for me. I this is also who I am as a person. My mother is um you know was a minister and uh, I don't. Uh, oh no, they really are. They they did break down. No Mariah though. They just Damn. like piped her in, but they did break down. Man. Ah, well, because anyway. they, they they matched up to Juicy J's feature from the Katy Perry song. Ah, there you oh. go. So, uh, yeah, my, my, like I said, my, my my mother was a minister and is, and is a woman of faith, and uh, lots of friends I have are faith, are people of faith, and so forth and so on, and I and I don't ever knock people's hustle. Uh, it, it's not for me. I know it's not for me. But when I'm in a bad place, I'm in a state or something like that. I ask people, hey man, if you would put up a put up a prayer. People who I know who pray, I ask them to pray. It's just it's just it's reality of, 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 of it's the dichotomy of my being. It's just something about positive thought, positive energy affecting something. It's not necessarily like for people like us where it's like the prayer like. Like I, Jesus is gonna fix it. It's just people's positivity making the situation feel better. 
Yeah, yeah. But yeah. for those people, prayer is their positive energy. So it's like he's got to know who needs what, like which way they need to work it. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, I don't, just got to put I, your I, thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Yeah, like I said, that's, that's that's why I don't I don't sit here. I don't believe that anyone's an asshole here. I don't think this person is an asshole. I don't think their his their parents are his parents are an asshole because, I mean, they they were just like in our mind, it was God that did that. In his mind, it was a good lawyer that did that. That's okay. <laughs> so that was that was a good read, but there's literally no uh, <laughs> you know, no no nothing of it that I can do anything with. But you know how we do, people. Like I said, we do a couple, and we get on out the door. We kind of really had our video game talk already because, you know what I'm saying, me and Box playing Halo, that's what it is. Uh, I did put in and install Ratchet & Clank uh, Rift Apart on my PlayStation, but I have yet to start it because I've been listening to my book. Guess what you can do when you're playing Halo multiplayer? Listen to a fucking audio book just fine. It's fantastic. Mm. You get the, I got the Wheel of Time sitting right next to me just going. I'm on book eight. No, book seven. Man, I have, if you saw the amount of podcasts I got stacked up in my queue right now, <laughs> like, it's a lot because I've just been on these book series again. I've been back, right back down to fucking, oh, for the record, I did check out the show The Wheel of Time. It's on Amazon. And uh, I am not happy with it. Uh-oh. But also I told y'all I was a man who was <clears throat> mad that uh, Jurassic Park the book was very different from Jurassic Park the movie. So it's just, that's just how my mindset works. It's, 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 it's what they've altered that bothers me a lot. Not necessarily that it has been altered. I get why things have to be altered for a television and and cost and so forth, because there are really a lot, a lot, a lot of people in that book series and so forth. But I'm just like, they really rushed through the first book pretty much in the first episode and a half. Like, how you gonna do a whole book in that much time? And like and so I don't know. I, no, I will don't. watch I will watch the next one. And uh because this the next episode is where they introduce one of my favorite characters from the books. And uh, everybody seems to be speaking about him on, on Twitter like, yo, they really did a good job with this particular character. So, uh, this character named Loyal. So I'm very, very excited to, to, to see Loyal, son of Aaron, son of... Uh, Slob on my knob like corn on a cob. <laughs> Checking with me into your job. It, it was funny. It was a, a TikTok video uh, the other day I seen where uh, it was like, you talking about your music is nasty? You, you going to play WAP? And then the oh yeah, they said that, 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 that song from like the thirties. Yeah, no, they, was, they played "Slab of My Knob." Oh no! So I seen a TikTok like that, but they played a song from like way back in the day. And yes. it was like, what? That I don't know what she said, but it was it was wild. It was very. It keeps saying video ended. It keeps saying like like it'll it'll come yeah, up and it'll be like video ended. It cuts in and out. I know what you're talking about though, because that chick I was talking to last year, she sent me that shit. It was like some 1930s like lady. Singing some real raunchy shit. I, I assumed that it was like fake. Like they, I I, I have heard some songs like that from back in the, like just because when I was young, you know, I, I grew up in, uh, in in Memphis, Tennessee, and and where music like that would have been very uh, popular. And I have heard some old shit like some old bitty ditties from back in the day like that mm-hmm. on uh, like seventy eights and shit. So yeah, it's quite possible, bloody likely. Now that y'all talk, now that you've mentioned TikTok, I realize I hadn't been on TikTok today at all, mm. like not once. So, poke over there and take a peek. And yes, multiple people have sent me uh, some TikToks I might need to take a look at. So, man, I, I uh, before we recorded tonight, I watched the new episode of Hawkeye. Oh, that was a damn I, good episode. I am liking this show. Yeah. I uh, if y'all are not fucking with Hawkeye yet, those first three episodes are really good, real strong. I, I might have to watch it, but I I hate Jeremy Renner. He's so good in this, and it's like it's like it it just gives you I don't know man I, I just it's just really well done. I like Haley Steinfeld. I don't even know her work from else, elsewhere. What else would I've seen her in? She was in uh, Bumblebee. She was in Pitch Perfect. Hmm. Well, I, I I think she was in. Um, She's also uh, a recording artist. True, True Grit. Really? Okay. Well, uh, she's very, see, very... Dickinson, Pitch Perfect 2 and 3. Yeah, True Grit, The Edge of 17. Yeah, that was good. Well, she's very good as Kate Bishop. Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, really? She, she was... the voice of that? Yeah. Uh, I think she was Spider-Gwen. 
dope. So I am uh, more than happy to uh, to keep enjoying this program. I would say, like I say, if you have not watched it, I would say you to watch it. It's very good, very strong uh, show. Plus, it takes place at Christmas time. I'm always down for like a little holiday kind of kind of fest- festival type shit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody uh, that you need to be in it is in it because I was worried that uh, what's his wife? What's her name in real life? The actress who plays his wife, um, Linda Cardellini. Linda Cardellini. I was worried she wasn't gonna be in it. And uh, then she was, and I was like, "Cool, cool." That means I'm like, I'm like, dope. That means my, my girl from Freaks and Geeks is uh, still uh, was a freak. She was in Freaks and Geeks, or was she in uh, the other one? She was in Freaks and Geeks. Okay. She, um, I think she might have been in an episode of Undeclared, but she also yeah. plays uh, Velma in quite a few Scooby Doo movies, right? Yep, 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 yep. So I do get down with that. So it's been a, it was it's, it's been a delight to watch that show. So I, I like I said, props to that particular program. Uh, yeah, all right, yeah, I feel good about that. That's a whole last show. <laughs> I have, I don't have him on camera, so do I? Is Gabriel asleep? Could be. Got no response. He, he, he hasn't said shit in like a half hour, or so <laughs> he's probably <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> Uh, you know what the deal is. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show wherever that is possible. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Stays Crunchy, and our Twitch channel, Stays Crunchy in Milk. Give us a follow over on Twitter at uh, SkimPod, S K I M P O D, if you want to support the show financially. We got a few bucks to toss our way. Uh, you can join us over on Patreon with members at the $5 and above tier. Get extra content each month and at early access to new shows. I need to put up the Christmas we tried. So I will make it a point to get that done here uh, in the next day or so. Uh, we also have merch available over at tpublic.com slash user slash stage crunchy milk all one word ooh a christmas i mean it's probably too late for that now but a christmas theme of uh, a christmas version of the the logo could be a good time so let's oh see what man I green and red it could be a cup of cocoa with the uh with stage crunchy and milk um in marshmallows in, in the mug yeah. okay yeah with you on that shit uh, feel free to give us a call, 216-264-6311. That's 216-264-6311. We'd certainly love to hear from you. The very idea of a stage crunching, so that's, I know, again, Cadillac on Mars, uh, they, uh, they was like, when I heard that this man was going to make a cookbook for his children, I don't even know what to say no more. He too good a dad. They, you, was, oh. you, 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 you was really on that shit. And I, and, I, and, I, and I told him, I was like, I do like the idea of the cookbook. And I was so much so that I started investigating, uh, you know, uh, getting a, just getting, how much getting a, a few books printed would cost. And uh, a skim cookbook is something I think I want us to do in 2022. We will discuss it further as we get an opportunity. And uh, maybe print, uh, what I looked at was about 25 copies. Oh, I feel like that's not, is. I feel like that's not too, that's not too, 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 too big an investment. And uh, that that can be something we uh, make available to be had. So uh, we'll let you know how that goes. Uh, that is Tatum 216. Yes. Tell you right now, without him having told us today, I had kind of forgot we was going to Chicago next week. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> utterly out of my mind. I was like, oh, that is a thing we are doing. Uh, that is Lunchbox 2099. Accurately stated. My, my, that's the chauffeur to the trip to Chicago. It's awesome. I just ride. It also means he's the DJ. So that's just how that goes down. So we probably will get a lot of Mariah going on. Goddamn right. <laughs> Breakdown on repeat six hours straight. <laughs> uh, that is currently Alabama's own uh, The Real ODP. Uh, traveling makes me sleepy. <laughs> I think you're just a sleepy man who has four kids, multiple pets, and so forth and so on to take care of. Life makes you sleepy, baby. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I'll sleep all... before I start traveling. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, yeah. apparently they're doing Crossroads right now. Mm. Oh, the, the yeah, remix, I, I assume. I also heard that bus that makes him feel good. <laughs> and I'm gonna miss everybody. Oh. Okay, they they were they doing Crossroads. It ended. They're they're all just yak, yeah. uh, yakking now. Yeah, I, I truly the wish busy they could apologize. Have... Man, Bi- Busy is such a um, I don't I, I don't know why they had him to begin with. He's such a wild because he can sing. He could kind of he could kind of carry. It He's to the him. harmony. Yeah, of the of the, of the bone thugs in he is that last part. 
Harmony. <laughs> so. well, he's thugs and Harmony, though. Because he's the thug of the other group. Is he a thug? <laughs> no, he's not a thug. He's a, he's a guy with some issues that needs some help. Fair enough. I am the internet. It's Tayrell 713. You have just been podcast. So I know you loved it. We'll catch you next week. Peace. Bang, bang, booty. Hey, what happened to you? You used to be beautiful.